Are you serious? Are you serious? Do you see what's behind me? Those are long coffins that, that, that are 2,300 years old on stilts, wooden coffins on stilts in a cave in Thailand. There's 33, that's right, you heard me right, 33 individuals buried in this cave, in these long coffins. These coffins are several meters long. How big is the people inside? This is a question for Mike from around the world. We're going to talk to him about that tonight. I want to welcome everybody. This is the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. We also have a, two, a double header tonight. we got two guests. First will be Mondo De La Vega. He's the uh, executive producer and host of the Jim Baker Show. And he's also come out with a brand new book, My Crazy Life. And we're going to, we're actually going to be talking to him because his story is so unique. It's so um, amazing, really. It's miraculous what God did and how God brought him out of the land, of, out of Los Angeles, in the gangs, as a gangster. How, what God, the miracles God, he, he's going to tell you all about that. It's incredible. Let me put a shout out real fast here for www.pastorpaulgold.com. That's www.pastorpaulgold.com. Hey, have you taken a good look at the banks lately? Uh, on the surface, everything seems fine, but there's a whole lot more going on underneath. It's like looking under the hood of a car and finding a mess of broken wires and parts. The parts are loans for homes and cars and, and, and high credit cards with high interest rates. They're hitting record highs now. It's kind of scary when you think about it. Why risk your money for a, for a tiny 5% return when things are so shaky? This is where Noble Gold Investment can help you. They're like that friend who knows all about keeping money safe. They suggest that you diversify with gold and silver. Look, gold and silver are oldies, but they're goodies. They're, gold is a biblical currency, okay? Plus... They've got a sweet deal going right now. If you if you sign up and get a, uh, a gold or silver IRA, they're going to give you this right here. This is one quarter of an ounce, pure going. Um, uh, this is a quarter of an ounce gold coin, and it's yours for free if you set up. That's pretty cool, and you can have that for free. Got some value there. So check it out at www.pastorpaulgold.com or call them on the phone at 877 646 5347. Okay, guys? You'll be glad you did that. You really will. Um, you can still get tickets to our latest webinar we did. What's next? Planet Planet X, what's next? You can still get tickets for that. They're available. So you go there, go to publicprophecy.com, get your tickets. You'll be ready to go. Okay? And if you need to call to get your ticket, you can do that. There's a number, 765-414-2230. All right. Now, let's talk about this, this ancient secret coffins in Thailand. What? Secrets of the ancient Thai log coffins in northwestern Thailand in this cave. Are you serious? Um, and that's the coffin behind me right there on these stilts. It's huge. They're huge. Now, many people are unaware that in the highlands of northwestern Thailand, harbor dozens of caves which serve as the final resting place for remarkable human burials and human beings. Or are they? Are they Nephilims? Now, this dates back 1,000 to 2,300 years ago. These burials consist of large, very long wooden coffins that are several meters long and crafted from a single tree trunk. Mounted upon above the floor so they won't rot on wooden stilts, reflecting a mysterious Iron Age culture that once thrived in the May Hung Sun province of northern Thailand. It's a groundbreaking new study. Archaeologists have conducted, get this, get this, get ready, get ready, genetic profile. In other words, they are they are they've opened these coffins israel they've opened these coffins and they've got some dna from these humans or nephilim or these giants okay these, these, these and 
They got 33 ancient individuals buried in these log coffin cultural site, shedding light on a complex genetic landscape of mainland Southeast Asia. You know, you wonder if the Smithsonian Institute, did they miss these? Or did they not know these were here? Uh, I would say this to Thailand. Better put armed guards around these caves because the Smithsonian, they love to come and take all the evidence. If there's any evidence of a giant or giant bones that would prove the Nephilim of the Bible, by the way, these guys will come running to get it. They really will. They'll pay, they'll pay ungodly amounts of money. What are they got to do to get it? That missed the- <laughs> yeah, miss- <laughs> they really are. The study is spearheaded by the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthro- Anthropology. Not only trace back the ancestries of these individuals, but also unveils the intricate genetic relationship with that age and our age. Are we talking Nephilim here? Are these hybrids? Are these giants? Um, the study revealed that the genetic makeup of the ancient individuals can be traced back to the farmers, at least, of the Yangtze River Valley in southern China and also to some of the local hunter-gatherers. Furthermore, it divided the farmer lineage into two groups. One group, it's linked to the Yangtze River Valley and the other to the Yellow River Valley, both in China. Added depth to the understanding so these are both from china but they're in thailand so um and why did they go through so much trouble to preserve these why are they so special now we don't know if those are giants in these giant coffins i don't know that it they don't tell me that but they do tell me that these 33 very unique individuals in these long large coffins that they are studying their dna to trace it back to their ancestors and to try to figure out what is the cultural significance of these ancient thai secret log coffins that are shrouded in mystery the coffins intricately crafted from single tree trunks adorned with distinct carvings at the head and foot uh, raises intriguing questions about what is their purpose Were they purely just practical, or did they hold a deeper spiritual value in Thailand? The study's lead author highlighted the carvings may reflect societal beliefs, the status of the deceased, or maybe the family or the clan or the enigma uh, of these secret coffins in Thailand. There in Thailand. We got to ask Mike from around the world about this. I mean, I know he knows. He, I know he's heard of it. I know he even knows. And we got to get the truth out of this. We d- really do. Guys, in just a few minutes, joining me is my good friend. And he is the executive uh, producer of and host, one of the hosts of the Jim Baker Show. Uh, and that's Mondo De La Vega. And wow. Um what a story he has. We're going to be interviewing him. He has a brand new book out called, I'll show it to you right there, My Crazy Life, okay? My Crazy Life. You can go get it uh, over at Amazon.com. Go over to Amazon and get it, My Crazy Life. I think it starts shipping March the 5th is what I saw. So it's going to be shipping here pretty quick. Uh, Discover the astonishing journey of Mondo de la Vega in My Crazy Life. The moment's that brought a gangster to grace. Step into a world where respect, power, and money lure a young man into the dark embrace of one of Los Angeles' most notorious Latino gangs. But behind the facade lies a haunting reality of crime, guns, and more. And he gets very, very, um, he's very open. He's very open. He's, it's, 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 it's an incredible story uh, where he came from, what he was involved in, and how he found grace, and how he then ended up finding Jim Baker and then becoming a part of the Jim Baker family. It is an unbelievable story. And, um, and he, he told me uh, the last time I was over there, 
uh, in Blue Eye, Missouri, over there at the Jim Baker show, he told me, I was on his show, he has a show too, called Mondo, and um, he told me, he said, hey, I wanted to write this book 25 years ago, I wanted to bring it out, and Jim Baker said I wasn't ready, he told me I wasn't ready, he said, if you go out there right now, they'll eat you alive, you're not ready, and he said, after 25 years, he finally told me, you're ready now, write the book, so you're going to hear all about it here in a minute, okay? Um, wow. Also, guys, those uh, atmospheric rivers that tore through California, we got to know more about that, okay? We got to know more about that because that's just, you know, that's crazy. I mean, what in the world, where did they come? I mean, I never even heard, I've never even heard of atmospheric rivers until two years ago. That's like became this new term. But another storm is making its way through California. It just did. Bringing Los Angeles more rain than they get in half a year. 13 inches of rain in 12 hours. Are you serious? Are you serious? That's insanity. And, um, and boy, 500 uh, mudslides and landslides. 500 different slides. I mean, California, I told you, though, you guys know I, I gave you guys a heads up three days before the first one hit. There was two different storms, Pineapple Express, they called it, two different atmospheric rivers, the second one stronger than the first, and I told you that people were going to lose their life. There would be landslides. There would be hail. There would be straight-line winds. There would be a, a gazillion gallons of rain, and everything I said came to pass and worse. Nine people are dead. The flooding was atrocious. And it's, it's all the way from San Francisco, Oakland, Hayward, California, San Jose, California, all the way down, all of Los Angeles, Malibu, all of Los Angeles area. Unbelievable. Keep on going down I-5 to San Diego, all the way down into Tijuana. The rain just kept coming down. The floods were outrageous and atrocious. People died. And then there was a tornado in San Diego. Matter of fact, I was on the phone. Israel Hall actually was on the phone. He had a FaceTime with South Bay Mike. And Mike was sitting there with his wife. And, and there was a tornado over their head in San Diego. No. No, it, don't, it can't do that. No, it just it don't do that. I don't even know if I've ever heard of a tornado in San Diego. I don't know if they've ever heard of one. It was in the air. Yeah, it never it didn't touch down. It did not touch down, but it it just they could see it. It was a funnel cloud setting up there. Um not crazy. Uh, but we're living in the last days now where okay, that 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 tornado was in Pismo Beach and Grover Beach. Unconfirmed because it never it never touched down, but it was definitely seen. Also, there was, on the radar, it said there was 60-mile-hour winds. Oh, guys, guess what? Iceland volcano exploded again for the third time. Third time now. Is that a charm? Iceland volcano did it again. The third eruption in, in as many months. And Grenovic, Iceland, the volcano in southwest Iceland, erupted for the third time since December. Sending today, Thursday, February 8th, sending jets of lava into the sky. You had, you had ash and plumes and fumes and smoke and toxic air. And the lava was flowing and glowing and showing. The magma was moving and grooving. It all was going on. And the, in the, in the, in the, the Blue Lagoon Spa, one of the island's nation's biggest tourist attractions, the eruption began at 1 a.m. Eastern time this morning along a nearly two-mile fissure northeast of uh, the Icelandic Meteorological Office. The event is taking place just two and a half miles northeast of Grenovic, which has already evacuated 3,800 people before the first Eruption Back on December 18th, they, they evacuated the entire town, and the people still can't go back. 
and the Icelandic Meteorological Office said the lava was flowing to the west and there was no immediate threat to Grenovic right now, but this thing has erupted three times. That's not good. That's just not good at all. Oh, and by the way, we got a terrible story coming out of San Diego again, but this time it was because five Marines have died. They have been confirmed dead following a helicopter crash. Five missing Marines have confirmed, have been confirmed dead as a helicopter crashed during a training flight, the U.S. Marine Corps is saying this morning. The Marines have been reported missing when their CH-53E Super Stallion helicopter was reported overdue to the Marine Corps Air Station there in Myanmar. The helicopter departed from the Greech Air Force Base near Las Vegas and was en route to the San Diego area when, unfortunately, it went down. Okay, this is the type of helicopter we're talking about here. And uh, so our prayers go out to the families of these five brave Marines that were training that uh, lost their life there in in a, a tragic situation. So our prayers are going out to their families, certainly, from a grateful nation. It's um, it's not good. And we've got to talk to Mike from around the world tonight about cancer in the kingdom, King Charles. This is There's more to this story, guys. First of all, if anybody gets sick in the in the uh, monarchy, they don't they don't talk about this stuff. They got doctors. It's almost they almost got like a hospital in Buckingham Palace. They can handle this stuff. But when he went in to have a procedure to correct an enlarged prostate, uh, a benign or uh, no, excuse me, cancer was discovered. Now the question is. You know, was that is it prostate cancer or did they find cancer somewhere else in his body? Because they're very thorough when treating people of anything. King Charles III immediately announced that he is not going to be doing anything but working on his health. This shock diagnosis comes a week after the 75 year old British monarch left the hospital following a separate procedure for an enlarged, enlarged prostate. King Charles' recent health problems started last month when Buckingham Palace announced on January 17th that the king would attend the hospital to undergo a corrective procedure for a benign enlarged prostate. He had been diagnosed after experiencing symptoms and receiving a checkup um, while he was in Scotland, but he was discharged from the London Clinic on January 29th and was previously said to have been doing well after spending three nights at the private hospital near Regent's Park. He was released hours after Catherine, Princess of Wales, left. The same facility where she had been resting following a successful abdominal abdominal operation. So William's wife, uh, Catherine, had surgery and had to stay 17 days. We still don't know what that surgery was about, but, you know, it had to be significant. However, while the king was undergoing these treatments, a separate issue as concern has been noted. According to the palace, the subsequent test identified a form of cancer. Health experts suggest it's not uncommon for many cancer patients to be diagnosed when seeking imaging or medical care for other reasons, especially when you do an MRI or other types of testing. You're going in for one thing, but additional testing is done and sometimes something else is discovered. That's what makes me think it's maybe maybe it isn't prostate cancer, but it could be another type of cancer. We don't know. But one thing's for sure, we are not uh we know that uh, they are being honest with us that he is sick and that he is canceling all of his um royal duties and uh Prince William is stepping up and is going to have to take care of these um, and that's and then and Prince Harry jumped on a plane immediately and flew back to London to be with his father and maybe to also take on some responsibility. You never know. I mean, we don't know the we just don't know the prognosis here. We don't know, but 
and if you remember when he first became king, and he's only been king about 17 months or something, he first became king. One of the things we talked to Mike around the world was about the fact that now the queen had died. And, and my, I'll never forget it because, Mike, I was in Indiana. We were doing the show from our studio in Indiana that night. And he said, you don't understand. Certain things can't be done except under the authority of a king. And so things are going to change. He said, absolutely, um, agendas are going to change because there's a king now instead of a queen. So this is all very important. Guys, while we keep an eye on that, don't forget these coffins in Thailand. They're huge. I mean, they're huge. And there's 33 coffins, 33 different individuals in them in a secret cave in Thailand. And um, you know this. Are they giants? I mean, these, these are the coffins behind me. What? Are they giants? Um, and boy, is the Smithsonian Institute trying to get their hands on them? I, you know, you know they, if, look, and here's what they're doing. They've opened them up. They see that these are unique individuals. What does that mean? Are they Nephilim? And they're, and they're being tested for DNA. Um, so, okay, we're still waiting for Mondo De La Vega. We don't see him yet. Um, so we'll just keep an eye out. I know we've, we've sent emails. We're contacting him, so. You got some trivia? Go ahead, Is. Toby Keith signed Taylor Swift to her first record deal with Big Machine Records with Copper Kettle. Uh huh. I knew Toby had signed her. Matter of fact, he, she was his first big star that he signed on his record. So he died, unfortunately. Um, really good guy. Really good guy. I mean, he loved the troops. Yeah, so Israel, one of Israel's good friends is the band leader for Toby Keith. Um, he made 10 trips overseas to the Middle East to do free concerts around different bases with the troops. 10 different years he did this. Kid, Kid Rock would go with him sometimes and others, but Toby Keith, uh, a true American. And he gave his life to the Lord. If you'll remember... At the CMAs, when he sang his song, Don't Let the Old Man In, Toby, after the, the, the awards ceremony was over, he said, they asked him, how are you getting through? How do you get through what you're going through? And he said, there's only one way, and that's through the Lord, through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And he said, I take it every day. I pray every day, and I trust in the Lord. So may Kobe... Excuse me. May Toby Keith rest in peace on this. Oh yeah, yeah I know. Really, very symbolic, and especially he signed Taylor Swift because she was on his record label. She's now the biggest star in the world. The Super Bowl's coming up this Sunday. She's of course engaged to marry Travis uh, Kelsey, who plays for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. Yeah, um, and so everything is, seems to be moving to, to the point that this could be the largest Super Bowl viewing crowd in the history of the world. Um, and it'll be the most watched other than the funeral of Queen Elizabeth. They don't think it will beat that, but uh, it's going to come close. So that it shows you the significance of that situation. Oh, guys, i got to tell you what's going on in the Middle East. Uh, Israel Israel was just hit about an hour ago. Heidi just got us to just breaking news. Israel was just hit with several rockets from Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. They hit one of the towns there in Israel, and I wrote it down. Um, Heidi gave it to me. 31 rockets from Hezbollah hit a town called Meron, Israel, M-E-R-O-N. Maron, Israel. Um, we don't know how many people are hurt and injured in this. We don't know yet. It's too early to know. Israel is um, responding, as you can imagine. And uh, 
this this is a new front. I'm telling you right now, this war. Everybody thinks that the war is over or it's going, we're winding down. No, I'm telling you, we're just getting started. the The Hamas war is just one phase of this broader war. It's I think it's Psalms 83. I really do because all these different nations have formed a confederacy against Israel. And uh, and now you see them acting out. It could lead us right in to um, World War III, or or let's put it this way: the Ezekiel thirty eight war. You know, when I think about the conversations I've had, especially with Chuck Misler, who who is adamant in saying that that was the next biblical milestone that was going to happen, was the Psalms eighty three and Ezekiel thirty eight right after it, or even or maybe just connected. Um, you know, so prophecy happening right before our very eyes. We're still looking for Mondo. He still hasn't, huh? I have, um, Heidi, uh, Heidi is now hunting him down. And when Heidi gets hunting you down, you will get found. <laughs> You're not going to escape her. She'll find you. She'll find Indiana Jones. I mean, she'll find you. All right. Yeah. Oh, man. Anyway, the, so the president of the United States, Joe Biden, just did a press conference just before we came on. Very strange. Uh, be, and I think he's up. He, well, I know he was upset. Extremely upset. Because, I yeah, the, Depart- uh, the Department of Justice, the DOJ, gave a report about those documents that he took home with him when he was vice president, which he doesn't have any right to. If he would have been president like Trump or Obama or Bush or Clinton, all of which who took documents home while they were presidents, they're allowed to, okay, because it's um, some kind of privilege. I can't remember what they call that. Executive, Executive privilege, and you're allowed. They're, they're allowed to have some. Not everything, but they're allowed to have some classified documents. But for some reason, Trump got raided because of it, okay? None of the other presidents have ever been treated like that, but we all know that Trump uh, is getting very special treatment from the uh, federal government. Anyway, Biden, they just the, the DOJ said they're not going to prosecute him. They said because he, he can't remember anything, um, that he's an 81-year-old elderly person, they said who can't remember, and we could never convince a jury to convict an utterly uh, forgetful lack of memory individual. We just, we, we just, we, so forget about it. We're just not going to charge. Okay, but uh, Joe is upset, okay? I mean, somebody just got fired. I mean, I, how many heads are rolling right now at the Department of Justice? I mean, it was so bad that Biden, he was, he was almost spitting nails. I mean, he hanging on to the podium, and he said, who is this guy? He, basically, who put that in the report? <laughs> he was not happy, okay? He was not happy. And then the press was all in there, and they were all badgering him, and these were his reporters. Okay, um, Ducey got to ask one question, and that made, Trump, uh, made uh, Biden mad. But then when the others started peppering him with questions and are you going to resign <laughs> and stuff like that. He wasn't happy. Okay. Anyway, he had, uh, um, it's not, it, it's, he's struggling. He's struggling, but this country's struggling. I mean, we're struggling, right? The border's wide open. We, we have a war raging in Ukraine. We have a war raging and getting worse in the Middle East. Inflation is sky high. The Southern border and the migration and the inflation, and the taxation, and the uh, the demonstrations, and the criminalization, and the uh, politicalization, is that a word? Uh, all of the uh, Asians, uh, migraine Asians, all of it, it's all getting bad, okay? We're really bad shape. Oh, by the way, speaking of Donald Trump, he had another day in court. Seems like that's every day. This time it was at the Supreme Court. And the state of Colorado pushing to remove 
President Trump off the ballot and disqualify him for running from president uh, with 11 other states wanting to follow suit. Um, I listened to it. I listened to the entire conversation. The lawyers that were uh, for the state of Colorado pitching their pitch. Um, I, I could hear all n- different justices, Supreme Court justices speaking all nine of them engaging, and and I'm going to tell you something. It's it, this vote could be nine to zero in favor of Trump. That you can't remove a man off of the ballot when he hasn't been charged with insurrection. There is no evidence of him involved in an insurrection. And anyway. Uh, there's no, there's really the the law doesn't even give them provision for a state to remove a presidential candidate. It has, to, there, the only way this can happen would be through Congress, and somebody would have to prove that Congress even has the authority. I mean, this is such a long shot in the dark, and um, it might end up the vote eight to one, maybe. Uh, Sotomayor, you never know. She may have a, she may go rogue, but it's going to be eight to one or nine to nothing. Trump's going to win this. He's going to be on all 50 state ballots as he should be. He's probably going to win Nevada tonight with about 90% of the vote. I bet you they've called it by now. Um, which really weird. It's in, in Nevada. It was a caucuses and, um, and there's 26 delegates up for grab. But they had a primary Tuesday. But the primary don't count. Nikki Haley decided to just run in the primary against none of the above. And none of the above got 63% and Nikki Haley got 30 She couldn't beat the none, none of the above. She couldn't even beat nobody. She can't beat nobody. If somebody can't beat nobody, then is anybody... Going to going to win the White House. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. So she just runs over there and gets killed by nobody. And then Trump is only got one other guy he's taking on, and that's some guy named Binkley. Did you even know he was running? I think his name's David Binkley or maybe Brian Binkley. See, I can't even get the first name right. Anyway, this should be a blowout, okay? Um, but we'll keep our eyes on it. Let's see what's going on. It's cra- I told you it's going to be a crazy year in 2020. Oh, speaking of getting people off the ballot, look what Russia did. Putin, he kicked his competition off the ballot. Yeah, so you in America, they're wanting to get rid of Trump, but in Russia, they actually do get rid of Boris. Nadezhdin. And I know I said his name wrong, but it's close. Nadezhdin. No, I bet it's not. Anyway, so the number one candidate. Now, think about this. There's only two guys. What's that? No, no, he's not going to be. No. He, he's an anti-war candidate. He was running high in the polls um, and was challenging Vladimir Putin in the next presidential election that's coming up next month in March. This guy might be going to win. Putin, though, has de- declared him uneligible because of they found irregularities in the signatures that put him on the ballot. Okay. Now, remember the guy who really was the challenger for boot scooting, nuke and shooting Putin? Hanging Vlads. Hanging Vlads, yes. Now, instead of hanging Chads, they had hanging. He is known as hanging Vlad. But, by the way, boot scooting, nuke and Putin, shooting. No, shooting Putin. Boot scooting. Um, there's one other guy that was trying to run for president. Remember him, Navani? He's in jail. He's in prison for nine years after being poisoned twice. That's so Trump. You shouldn't feel bad because he, he, at least you ain't going up against Vlad. Okay. Um, I mean, at least all they're trying to do is take your name off the ballot or throw you in prison for 400 some years. Um, but in Russia, they actually do poison you. And they actually do, do take you off. I mean, do you see that? Do you see America starting to look like the communist regimes 
the banana republics that we've watched held these ridiculous elections. Now the United States, we look like we're one of those nations. Our republic is under siege. It truly, truly is. And um, and uh, look, it's it's sad. We're still looking for okay. Mondo. He, he's coming soon. Okay. Okay, okay, mistake. That's okay. And so he may be on the, on the That's all right. Okay. Okay, we'll get, so Mondo is going to join us. So as we're waiting for him to show, let's take a break right now. Um, since Mondo's wandering, um, is he the wandering preacher man? Get some coffee and calm down. Oh, yes. Jeffrey Claire Cooper wrote this. And he let me record it. And it goes perfect with the Preacher Man band. It really does. John spent his days walking up and down the Jordan, making a pathway for the Lord. He cried out to the people, a message of repentance, the kingdom, heaven in his word. Confess your sins, the time is right Come on in and get baptized On the side of redemption you will stand This was the mission of John the Baptist A wandering preacher man. On the road to Damascus, the trouble in his heart. Saul was the meanest guy around. And the good Lord saw right through him. It was time for a change. In a flash of light, he knocked him to the ground. He would never be the same, so he spread the truth with his new name. Message of redemption across the land. This was the mission of an apostle named Paul. Let's oh, bring him. Mondo De La Vega's here. We're going to bring him in here. He, he's not in his pajamas. He'll be fine. <laughs> here he is. Mondo, how you doing, my brother? I am doing better now, Pastor Paul. It is so good to see you. Great to have you. Um, and, um, oh, I look forward uh, to being back in, in blue eye with you every time I get a chance. Mm -hmm. And um, But we brought you on tonight because we're so excited. Your book right here behind me, My Crazy, My, <laughs> my crazy Life by Mondo De La Vega. This, oh, is, a, this is amazing. Uh, <laughs> Man, so, you got a better background than I do. I'm telling you, no, no, no. I thought you, you, you're sitting in the comfort comfort of your home there. Um, <laughs> you're not on the orange couch, folks. Seriously, here it is, my crazy life. You can get this over at Amazon.com. Tell us where where all they can get this thing's going to ship. Start shipping next month, isn't it? Oh, this book? listen, you can get it on Amazon.com. You can go to Walmart.com. If you like Target, you can get it on Target, Barnes & Noble. You can get it on BAM, which is Books A Million. You can go to JimBakerShow.com. I mean, this thing is everywhere, Pastor Paul. I can't believe it. <laughs> I, well, you told me that uh, you wanted to write this book 25 years ago. Let me, let me read to you what it says, folks. It says, Discover the Astonishing Journey of Mondo De La Vega in My Crazy Life. The Moments That Brought a Gangster to grace oh, man. step into a world where respect power money lured a young man into the dark embrace of one of los angeles's most notorious latino gangs yeah. but behind the facade Ooh. lies the haunting reality of crime guns and uh, and more yeah. how does a gangster find grace tell us tell us a little bit about the story your story here in this book 
Listen, Pastor Paul, the way a gangster finds grace, it takes someone that has the authority, someone that has the willingness to walk into my world and tell me three of the most powerful phrases that changed my life. My sister walked into a gang infested neighborhood when everyone else was afraid to walk up to me and share Jesus and tell me that I had a different destiny. Now, you have to understand when you read my book, you're going to understand that the gangs reminded me every single day not to make plans past 18 years old because I was either going to be dead, I was either going to be locked up in prison for life, or I was going to find myself in the hospital unconscious fighting for my life. Yet I didn't realize I can have life past 18 years old. Yet when my sister walked in and delivered three of the most prophetic words, what if God is real? What if prayer works? And what if you have a different destiny that changed the trajectory of the future of my life? Because up to that moment, death was at my door. Death was knocking on my door. Everywhere I went, death was knocking. Yet at the same time, life was chasing me. And when something is chasing you, it's a lot different than someone looking for you. <laughs> Amen. You know, when life is, and that's what an amazing analogy is life was chasing me. And we know who the life giver is. We, the Lord was hunting you down. Yes. When, while yes, you, but you did, I mean, you told me, uh, I was, I had the privilege of being on one of your shows and I think it was before the show where you told me that, uh, the story of how you found that grace. Do you, uh, can you share I, some I'll of that? I'll tell you, absolutely. It's a matter of fact, I, I'm recording my audio book. For those that love audio books, I'm recording my audio book with this beautiful accent voice that I have. <laughs> I love it. I love your voice. Listen, they wanted, they wanted to get a professional actor to do the, the audio book. I said, no. wait a minute. No, forget an audio. Forget an actor. You got to have me. You know That's what right. I mean? That's and, right. I was, I was reading the part where the moment that changed my life, the moment that really transformed me was the moment that I found myself inside of a vehicle getting ready to go do a hit. And I remember that that morning I had promised my sister after she delivered those three prophetic words that I was going to meet her at the church and do her a favor to hear this preacher that was going to be given his testimony. Yet inside of that low rider, inside of that vehicle, the atmosphere felt different. The atmosphere was not the same as it was in the past low rider moments that we had in that and that I share on the book. Usually, you know, they're passing the joint, the music is loud and the music is bumping and the low rider is hopping. Not this time, Pastor. This time the atmosphere felt different. And something began to happen that uh, uh, a courage rose inside of me to challenge my homeboys to tell them, stop the car. And we got into an argument and there was a defining moment. And I think that defining moment is for everyone that is listening to me right now. That sometimes you have to have the courage to contend for your life. Amen. Sometimes you have to have the courage to find it inside of you to contend for your future, contend for your family, contend for your ministry, contend for the call of God. And sometimes you have to fight through the crisis in order to find the purpose and destiny that God has for you. And at that moment, there was a battle going on. And, and inside of that battle, one of the guys pulled a gun in front of me and put it in my face and told me to shut my mouth. And this is one of your homeboys. This is one of your gangsters that were with you. One of the guys that was supposed to be my brother, one of the guys that, you know, the guys that were, we, we live to die and die to live for each other. Right, we were willing right. to die for one another. Yet he violated the code and pulled, pulled that pistol in my face. And yet I told him, stop the car. When I got wow. out, of, when I left that car, I never looked back. I didn't realize what happened to them. I describe in my book that as I'm walking towards that church, I'm listening to a sound that I'm not used to. I'm used to listening to Tupac, you know, MWA, Ice Cube, Snoop Doggy Dog, all right. the oldies. But I wasn't used to listening to the sound that was coming from that church. And all of a sudden, I have my bandana on. I have my locs on. I have my two nine millimeters in, in my waist in case someone notices that I'm there. 
And I thought that my sister had set me up because when I walked up to that church and it's very dramatic because it was life or death for me in that moment. For some people, church is not that way. For right. some people, religion experience, uh, the religious experience is not that way. But for me, walking up to that church was life and death, death of a reputation, death of everything that I used to know. But it, it was also life that was waiting for me on the other side. Mm, yes. Now you have to understand, you know this, that I wasn't afraid to die. I was not afraid no. to go to prison the rest of my life. I was not afraid to get in gang, gang fights. I was not afraid. I was not afraid of anything. Yet I found myself afraid of hope. Oh, I found myself afraid on what was on the other side. Oh, I mean, I've never heard anybody ever say that. I was afraid of hope. You were afraid to believe that there's something okay. better. Absolutely. I was afraid to feel love. Yeah. I was afraid to feel peace. I have been living on survival mode. And I described that everything happened when my father walked away, when my father was beating my mother close to death. Now, this is the powerful part because up to that moment when my father violated my mother physically, my father, all I knew about him was he was a sweet man. He was a kind man. He never spoke to my sister and I with a raised voice. He never spanked us. He ne we never saw that kind of aggression on him. He was my hero. He was everything to me. So in that moment, when I saw my father turn into a monster, it destroyed me. It, 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 it birthed hate and anger and abandonment like never before. Wow. Yet that morning when my father walked, you know, my father walked in and everything was great. We were all having breakfast together. Family was great. Yet that evening, the very broom that my mother had used for years to clean our home, the, that very broom became the weapon of her demise. He used that against he used that against her. And listen, it's just like the devil. He will use everything against you that you usually use for good. He oh. tries to use it against you to beat you. You know, Jim Baker used to say this quote that the devil knocks you down and then kicks you for falling. Wow. He, the devil will knock you down and then kick you because you fell. That's it. And that's how life works a lot of times. Yeah. The people will knock you down. Then the same people will kick you for falling down. And they will leave you. They will walk away from you. They'll betray you. They will, they will sincerely do what they never meant to do. Yet they spit upon you and feel like you're no good. Yeah. Up to that moment when I was walking up to that church, I didn't feel good enough to sit with someone like you, Pastor Paul. And I described in the book that I, I only felt good enough to sit along the the, the gangsters, the yeah, drug I understand. Dealers, the yep. pimps and the hustlers and the cartel members and the drug dealers and the crime mobsters and the trigger men. Yet here is God calling me, asking me if I wanted hope, if I wanted peace, if I wanted love. Yet on the other side, I was afraid. I was afraid wow. of what love can do to me. Because in the streets, they reminded you every single day that love and compassion are a weakness of a warrior. And if you allow that in your heart, your enemies, your own homeboys, or that means your own friends, will use that against you. As so I you, walked up to that church, yeah, the man that is getting ready to give this message is the man that I recognize as a former gang member, a rival former gang member. And I thought that my sister has set me up. I see. As I look to the left, Pastor, I see about a group of 20 guys that look like gang members. And I thought my sister set me up. On the right side, I look at this gang members that were dressed in suit suits. And I thought my sister had set me up. The difference in this atmosphere that was happening is I saw the gang members on the left. And the difference was they had their hands raised and they were worshiping God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. On the other side, I saw the older gang members dressed in suit suits, and they were clapping and cheering and, 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 and crying. And I'm thinking, where am I? Do these people not realize what they look like? Do they not realize what, 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 what they're doing? And here I'm judging them, and yet the man on stage begins to say these words. He says, I'm supposed to tell my testimony tonight, he said. But yet 
there's a young man in this room that needs to hear the greatest story that has ever been told. He needs wow. to hear the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. This young man needs to know that Jesus loves him, that Jesus doesn't want to get even with him, that he wants to make things right with him. I'm Amen. looking around and I got my, my hands and my guns and I'm sweating by this moment. And I'm thinking, who is this young man he's talking about? <laughs> I didn't even feel like a young man. I felt I felt so old. I felt I felt abused. I felt exhausted. I was I was filled with anxiety. I was filled with depression. I was filled with all this void and abandonment, not feeling good enough to even be in that room. Yet this man begins to preach this gospel and begins to talk to me and challenge me. And he said this words, what are you going to do? Are what you going to leave do? this place knowing that you heard the gospel for the first time, knowing that you heard hope for the first time, and you're going to walk out of this building knowing that there's a bullet with your name on it? And I looked at him, Pastor, and I said, I don't think your God can forgive me. I don't think your God can forgive who I am, what I've done, and what I'm feeling right now. And as I'm getting ready to walk out of that building, Pastor, something began to happen. There's a song that came on. These weren't great singers. As yeah. a matter of fact, they were horrible singers. <laughs> they were yeah. out of tune. Right. Their guitars were out of tune. The room was hot. There was no air conditioning. There was over 500 people there. The women were fanning themselves. The men were dabbing their foreheads with their handkerchiefs. Yet they were joyful. They were happy that were there. These were people that were survivors, just like, you know, the next person next to them. And they had survived their own trauma. And as I'm getting ready to walk out, there's no lights. There's no concert lights. There's no fog machines. And a song comes on. As I'm getting ready to walk out of that building. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. It was in Spanish, though, Pastor. I get it. En la cruz, en la cruz, yo primero vi la luz, y los pecados de mi alma el salvó. When I heard those words, Pastor, a tear came down, and another tear came down. For the first time in my life, I felt peace like I've never known before. The first time I felt love, a love that I couldn't explain. Praise I had God. been chasing love. I had been chasing after peace, and I could not find it in money. I could not find it in reputation. I could not find it in my influence. I could not find it with my gun. I could not find it with the girls. I could not find it with my friends. I could not find it anywhere but in that church that was hot, that was humid, that was sweaty, out of tune singers. The guitars weren't tuned. <laughs> Yet in that moment, I found the greatest peace and love that I had ever felt into that moment. Amen. Amen. It was the, this was the defining moment of Mondo de la Vega's life. You this is you, you this is when you embraced grace, a case for great for grace here, a gangster finding grace so let me ask you, you you get you get born again you feel that overwhelming what it feels like like every person's here tonight this story's unbelievable it's it's believable because yeah. i know you but it's unbelievable that the grace of god can go beyond the barriers go 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 below the bottom if he has to god will go below the bottom to pull us back up and give us a chance give us hope this was a setup all right a setup by the holy spirit right I completely set up because just a few months before that, like I told you, Pastor, there was, that death was knocking on my door. And I write a chapter called, I should have been dead. Mm. It could have been me. And mm. I want to tell you something, that there's a moment in time that things begin to correlate according to God's will. And I want to remind people, just because you're going through a crisis doesn't mean God is not in it. That's right. Everything fell apart for my mother, for my father, for my family. And in the midst of their marriage falling apart, in the midst of our lives not making any sense, God decides to deliver a prophetic word to my mother. Wow. And that prophetic word is this. My mother found herself at a church, at a mega church in Central America. 
my mother was not used to being around those kind of apostolic and, and, and evangelical ministries and, and people speaking in tongues and people interpreting tongues and all the Holy Spirit movement. Right. She was not used to that. Yeah. So when we walked into this church, all of a sudden the worship goes down and speak. somebody begins to speak in tongues. And then another person rises up and begins to interpret the word. And this is the word that I write in the book. There's a lady in this room that has two kids. One is a boy. And God wants to tell you that God has a plan for his life. You have a little girl. God has a plan for her life. God wants to remind you that he's getting you out of your Egypt and is going to move you into the promised land. Praise God. And he's going to be with you. And he's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. And my mother stands up and says, that's me. That's me. <laughs> Praise <laughs> God. She's claiming it. I mean, she heard the word and she's claiming it by faith. That's me. And this is my family. And we're coming to Jesus. That's it. And listen, Change her life. that was the beginning of the prophetic word. And then God gave a second prophetic word. And, and listen. My mother had to do things the right way for her own sake. I understand why a lot of Latinos are, that are coming from Central America and South America are making their, their way to the border. They're fleeing from their own trauma. They're fleeing from the disaster of politics and the bureaucracy of paperwork and, and it's falling apart. Yet they're, they're so desperate. They're running to the promised land. Yet I have a word for someone that is watching right now. Because I detail in my book, my mother was born in Los Angeles, California. She wanted to do it the right way so her daughter and her son didn't have to hide in another country. But there was a price that she had to pay. Financially and spiritually and emotionally and physically, there's a price to pay when you want to do things the right way. When you want God's way, you have to wait on God. Yes. Some of you are trying to go illegally in spiritual realms that doesn't even belong to you. Some of you are trying to walk into places in the spiritual sense illegally without doing it the right way. And listen to this. My mother had to wait in, through the process of bureaucracy for a whole year. She had been denied, denied, denied the citizenship for her kids. Yet she kept believing. She kept waiting. At the end of that wait, she almost gave up hope, Pastor. And she found herself, we went to a resort, and she was sitting by the poolside. My sister and I were swimming. A very famous Christian singer walks up to her and says, you're going to think I'm weird, but I have a word from God for you. That lady gave the same prophetic word that my mother, my mother had received in that church just a few months earlier. Wow. Listen, God's prophetic word for you doesn't change. Quit chasing a prophetic word on Facebook. Quit chasing a prophetic word on social media. You have to wait on God because God doesn't change his mind on his word. When he Amen. gives it to you, he's stable in his ways. Amen. Some of you are so unstable on your ways. How can God even trust you with a prophetic word? The Bible wow. says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. In all your ways, be stable. A double-minded man is unstable in his ways. And a lot of you want a prophetic word from God, yet you're unstable in your ways. How can God trust you to the promised land if God can't even trust you on a prophetic word that he has not changed his mind about? Now watch this. This is powerful because there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. I can stop there right now and I can go to heaven just on that one opening statement. <laughs> I don't even need to hear the rest of the story like Paul Harvey said, sir. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because when God has a plan for you, most people don't have plans for you. The world, the gangs didn't have a they plan, don't have a plan, for, you, plan for you. No, they, they don't. They told me don't make plans past 18 years old. Yet, here's God. He said, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, not to harm you, but to prosper you. Amen. Listen, I don't know where we got the idea that God changes his mind on how he wants to have a plan for you and how he wants to bless you. But I understood that the moment the gospel penetrated my soul and changed my heart, the greatest miracle I've seen 
It's not someone walk out of a wheelchair, which I love to see. Sure. I've never seen anybody being raised from the dead, which I would love to see. Love to see it. But the greatest miracle I've ever seen is a heart that was changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Folks, this is Mondo De La Vega. You've seen him. He's an executive producer uh, and host uh, of the Jim Baker Show. Uh, he has his own show, The Mondo Show, over at the PTL Network, the, uh, you know, Praise the Lord Network, uh, Jim Baker's Network. I'm on it. It's a great network. It's amazing people. I love going and being with you guys. Uh, and, uh, wow, I mean, I can't wait to read the book. I just can't. Everybody, <laughs> look, guys, go right now to Amazon tonight, okay? Yes. Go tonight. Order the book. Order the book. Order two of them. Give somebody else the other one. It's going to change somebody's life. And when you say it's my crazy life, I guess you're meaning you won't believe where I was and where I am today. I mean, it's it's crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. That, listen, that's one definition. But the definition of that is the tattoos I have right here. The I three dots. Yeah. In the streets, the three dots are called the trinity of life. Most people in the gangster world will achieve one out of three, two out of three. The ultimate price is three out of three. Number one, point number one is the ultimate price, which is your life will end up in prison, right? The ultimate one is you will end up dead. The other one is you will end up in the hospital unconscious or fighting for your life or maybe on a wheelchair, not wanting, not being able to walk. And some of you have a son in prison. Some of you have a daughter in prison. Some of you have nephews that are part of gangs right now. Maybe you lost your son to gang violence. Maybe you lost your nephew to gang violence. Maybe you lost someone to gang violence. But I want you to know this. If we don't get to the gangs with this book, the gangs are going to be knocking at our doorstep. And right now, there's an epidemic of gangs that are operating right. in a different way that the 80s and 90s. Pastor, listen to this. By the 1980s and 90s, America had no idea of what gangsters were that were coming from Latin America. America was used to gangsters that were coming from Chicago, right. gangsters that were Italian gangsters or mobsters, you know, the Irish gangsters, the Russian gangsters. But there was an explosion of Latin gangsters, Latino gangsters that exploded into the scenes in the 80s and 90s that overwhelm America and the world to this day. El Salvador has found a solution for gangsters. Guatemala, yeah, yeah. Honduras, Central America, South America, but almost every nation has been affected because of the gang epidemic that took place in America in the 80s and 90s. It was one police officer, and I write it in my book, a police officer, a officer said, that the gangster problem is worse than cancer. We have a problem in epidemic in America, yet we don't want to realize it, that we have gangsters that are operating right now that must be reached for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe this book is for this hour. I believe I this book is for this moment. I want you to go order this book right now yep. and get it into the, hands, into the hands of every gang member that you know in your town, in your city, Believe me, if you think there's no gangs in your town, you must be sleeping under a rock. Yeah, they're everywhere. We're seeing it here in America. Let's be honest, folks. And it's it's to the point now that no one knows what to do. I mean, the cartels out of Mexico and, and in America, the, the cooperation that's going on, the gangs are running uh, out of control, loose, gone. And there's only one answer is what I'm hearing you say. And I know it's true. There's only one answer, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. What he can do for Mondo, he can do for you. He can do for me. He's Listen, a, I be, it's life-changing. I, be, I begin to realize this, that if I was going to stay out, now this is the life-changing moment that I write in my book, and I don't want to share too many stories because I want you to read the book. But the defining moment was not on that church service where I accepted Jesus at that moment. My testing came the next day when I had to go face the OGs, the shock callers, the leaders uh -oh. of that gang, no. and let yeah. them know what happened the night before. Because if you remember, I was in that vehicle, and I had to fight my way out of that vehicle in order to make it to that church service that I promised my sister I was going to be in. 
I didn't realize what happened to my friends. You have to read the book, what happened. But when I showed up, I walked in and immediately three of the shot callers, three of the captains, three of the guys that were running that gang. And I didn't realize that when I became part of this gang, it was one of the most notorious gangs that Los Angeles had ever witnessed. One of the most notorious gangs that changed the way drug was trafficked and was moved in L.A. from that moment all the way to now. I have become part of one of the most notorious gangs and I didn't realize it. But when I walked in, I was received with a shotgun in my back, a pistol in my forehead and a Colt 45 on my chest. And they asked me, where were you last night? I knew if I said the wrong thing, my brains will be splattered on that cold concrete floor. But I couldn't deny the power of love and peace I felt the night before. I didn't realize that I was already becoming an evangelist at that moment. Right. I didn't realize that my first witness was going to be them. But I couldn't deny the power. Was I scared? Absolutely. Was I afraid? Was I in fear? No, because up to that moment, I knew that I had made things right the night before and I was okay if I was dead now. I didn't make, I didn't realize that there was an eternal life. I didn't believe that there was eternity for me. I believed I was already in hell. Yet when the gospel was presented to me, I realized I needed to make things God, right with God. I needed to surrender my life. I'm telling you, from that moment on, my faith in God was tested all the way up to three years after I got saved. They tested me. They came after me. The same people I was willing to give my life for were now hunting me down to see if the decision I had made that Saturday night was real or not. Amen. And when they, when they heard your story, hope jumped. Hope came alive in them. You know it did. They're not going to show you that. But something happened. The, and besides that, the Holy Spirit of God, the, the, the saving grace, the protection that we get in Jesus Christ also kicked into gear. And you were able to walk away from there and become, you became a brand new man, a brand new person. You had to grow, no doubt about that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, but we, but we all have to, right? And uh, I, I'm just. Uh, Mondo, I just want to say again, guys, I'm um, thank you for coming on, being with us tonight. Um, folks, go get his book. It's at Amazon.com. It's at Target. It's at Walmart. It's at Books a Million. It's at Barnes and Noble. It's at the Jim Baker Show. Go get it. My crazy life with my good friend Mondo De La Vega. Hey, it's crazy that I'm here, even with you. It's crazy I, <laughs> that I'm friends with you. It's crazy that God has a plan. Listen, just a few years ago. I was on my road to death, and here today I sit on a national syndicated program co-hosting and then a national syndicated hosting my own show. But more than that, God, I didn't believe in marriage. I didn't believe in having kids in the gang. Yet God said, we got to fix that. Yeah. And today God gave me a beautiful wife with two beautiful kids, twins, a boy and a girl. Oh, and good. here God told me this. If you wait on me, I will use you later in your life. But if you don't wait on me, you can have whatever the world's given you, but it's not going to last forever. But when you wait on God, the gifts of the Spirit will make room for you. Listen to this. Most people are chasing the call of God, which is good. Yeah. And most people want to build on the gifts of God. And that's good. But most people are not fulfilled without the will of God in their life. Amen. When you find the will of God, you find fulfillment in the calling that God, God has for you and the gifting of the spirit will make room for you. Today, you know, a few years ago, and I write about it in my book, I write a chapter on who's Jim Baker. It right. seemed like the whole world knew who Jim Baker was except me. <laughs> Yet when I found Jim, he had just come out of prison and thank God for people like Pastor Tommy Barnett and Matthew Barnett yeah, yeah. that opened up the Dream Center because even that was a miracle. The Dream Center took me in. Pastor Tommy and Matthew took me in and believed in me without even knowing what I was called to do and placed me next to them. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't called to be a leader. I wasn't prepared to be a leader. But they said, no, there's something about you that we must protect and develop. And we're going to put you here 
and allow you to make all the mistakes that you need, but we're not going to throw you out. Thank the you, Jesus. The key is find people that believe in you, find people that have a purpose for you, that have a plan for you. And at the Dream Center is where I met Jim Baker and my life changed forever. Amen. Amen. Well, it was divine. It was a divine connection. It was a divine uh, moment in your life, in his life, in our lives right now. And uh, so, Mondo, I got, I got to let you go. I got another guest coming. Everybody go get his book. Go get his book right now. Tonight, tonight, My Crazy Life. Right now. Right now. <laughs> and I'm going to see you in a few days. I'm going to be on uh, – I can't make it out there this next time, but we're going to do it by uh, uh, video. But I'll Absolutely. make it the next time. Cause we I, love you. I, I love being there. So love you. I love Jim. Uh, Lori, tell everybody I love them all. I love you, Mondo. I'll see you. Thank ya. you, sir. Thank you for we'll coming you on. Soon. All right. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye-bye. Mondo De La Vega, folks. I mean, really, this guy's the real deal. He's the real, he's the real deal. Okay. He is the real deal. And um, I appreciate him because he he where he came from and where he is today is miraculous. But who he is today and the humbleness, the man is really one of the more humble people. And uh, I just, he's impressive. Like you wouldn't, you just wouldn't believe. And so thank you, thank God for him. Mike from the world is going to join us here in just a few moments, uh, just any moment here. And we've uh, got a lot to talk about uh, tonight. These, these giants, um, these giants that they found um, in Thailand, in this cave behind me, in, the, in these big, huge coffins. I mean, these things are unbelievably long. They found 33 of these coffins with 33 what they call unique individuals in them. I believe they're probably giants. I believe they're probably some type of giant Nephilim. Uh, the Smithsonian Institute didn't know about these, apparently, and didn't get them. Thailand's hung on to them, and now they are testing the DNA. They're, they're going to ch- try to figure out what the genetic makeup is. They're not saying that they're giants, but you tell me. Why would somebody be buried in a 13-foot coffin, a wooden coffin, and, and, these, and there's 33 of them inside this cave, and they're on stilts so that the, the, they're setting up where they couldn't get wet and the moisture, and they're 2,300 years old. So they had to be about, you know, 300 uh, B.C., and uh, and they're in Thailand, yet they believe that these uh, unique, if they're giants, Nephilim, whatever they are, they're probably from China. At least that's what they believe. Um, and I'm just wondering, when will they tell us, you know, what they found here? Um, it's amazing to me, but then again, it's not. Because the Bible said there were giants in the land before and after the flood, before and after the flood. And this is certainly after the flood. And so what God is doing, you see, God's preserved uh, archaeological finds and artifacts and tombs and coffins and and, um, sacred texts, whether they be on stone or copper, or, or, or parchment, or drawn on, uh, you know, hy- hy- hydrographics or petrographs or whatever, ancient tablets. And we're finding out of the ancient civilizations that were roaming the earth. And then, you know, when the River Euphrates, when those steps, those steps go under the River Euphrates, and then I read in the Revelation, of course, my book that's coming out, Revelation 9-11, how that we know that Apollyon comes out of the bottomless pit, but he releases the four fallen angels that are bound under the river Euphrates, and he will release them, and they will then release the hordes of hell Upon mankind, and that's why we wrote the book, Revelation 9-11. That's the reason we did it, 
is because we wanted people to know what's coming. Yes, we're living in the day. Something biblical is going on, folks. Something biblical is going on with the signs of the second coming of Christ. It really is. And uh, you need to be ready. Mike Front of the World is going to join us any, literally any moment, any second. And we look forward to talking to him. we got a lot to talk about. King Charles, cancer in the kingdom, California's atmospheric river. Uh, and as a matter of fact, there's also landslides in the Philippines right now killing people. 500 landslides in California. The 4.0 earthquake just off the coast of Florida, just off the coast of Cape Canaver- Canaveral today. The Iceland volcano explosion, our third, third eruption of that um, um, volcano. And uh, also, what about the, uh, the in the Middle East? Uh, again, 31 rockets fired by Hezbollah out of southern Lebanon into the town of Meron. M-E-R-O-N, Moron, Israel. Israel then retaliates. So here we go. Is that second, is the second front opened up, the war opening up now between Israel and Hezbollah? You know, Iran is calling the shots. The Americans have killed the top Iraqi militant leader, killed him right in the street, assassinated him right in the street of Baghdad. With a killer drone ordered by President Biden, uh, the battle rages on. The battle rages on. Uh, the Marines, we lost five Marines in that crash, helicopter crash in San Diego. Uh, there's just a lot going on. And then, of course, the President Biden, very upset tonight. I watched his press conference, extremely mad because the Department of Justice said they're not going to prosecute him for taking documents uh, because they said he's an 81-year-old elderly man who has no memory. There's no need to prosecute him. Well, this, this, Biden is furious that that's how he was portrayed by the Department of Justice. And meanwhile, while that's going on, the Supreme Court heard the arguments today on whether or not Donald Trump can remain on the ballot in Colorado. Does that mean the stone steps? Are we about to see the stone steps? Are we about to see President Trump in one of these trials that are coming up? Will he be convicted? Will we literally see them walking him down the stone steps toward prison? And, and what will happen to this country if that happens? Okay, I'm waiting on Mike around the world. Um, and uh, he should call any second here. And I, I want to get his take on King Charles, the cancer in the kingdom. But we just want to know what he thinks about all these different things. And, of course, the solar flares that have been erupting, uh, very significant. The solar flares erupting out there. Um, it's It's unbelievable, really. We, we, we are really living in the time that the Bible said would come, that there would be wars and, and, and rumors. Uh-oh, here he is. Okay, Mike, I see you called me on that line, so let me uh, switch switch connections here. Okay, are you there, my brother? Yeah, I'm right here. Okay, Mike from around the world, folks. Uh, Mike, great to have you tonight once again. Wow, there's a lot going on. Lot going on, yeah, um, yes. and uh, the Middle East, and uh, you know everything happening. The volcano erupting in Iceland, the earthquake off the coast of Florida, 4.0. What does that mean? Uh, the, the atmospheric river destroying California. King, there's cancer in the kingdom uh, with, with King Charles. Uh, it goes on and on and on, and then of course the Supreme Court. Um, and their ruling is coming, whether Trump will remain eligible. I believe he will. But I want to start tonight, Mike, just start with what's behind me. These are coffins. They found 33 of them in Thailand in a cave. They're 2,300 years old, and they were 13 foot long. And according to the, 
they're saying is they have 33 unique individuals. So they're going to test the DNA to try to understand their ancestors. I don't know if these are uh, Nephilim giants. I don't know. They don't say. They just say they're unique. Uh, We wanted to get your take on it, what you may know about these 33 coffins in Thailand. Uh, Thailand is full of surprises. Uh, <laughs> has been, has been for a long time, but uh, I, I wouldn't doubt that they are um, extraordinary. Let's put it that way. All extraordinary. Right. They they found other digs. There have been other digs in Thailand and things that have recently, recently been uncovered through uh, LIDAR um, where they essentially removed the jungle from an overhead shot right and they can tell they can look at the details in the ground it's uh it's quite extraordinary what the world is is what they're uncovering with lidar but uh they had other digs and and you know people buried who had no um facial features like for example what? a skull a skull with no nose no eyes no no orifices for ears or any of that just a mouth right uh they found an entire site like that. Well, how did these? And these were these were bones, right? These were yeah, there's... actual bones, skulls. Yeah. With no no eyeballs, no nose, no orifice for the nose, for the um, eyes, ears, sinus cavities, none of that. Cranial sutures. Uh, they were there, but they were odd. Not quite yeah, like the not uh, human. Some of the giant Nephilim skulls, but uh, you know they were they were different. So digs like that are not uncommon so there's a lot more so even though this might have made it in the news you're saying there's more there's more digs like this there's more things that's being found out there we're just not privy to it there's a lot coming forward um a lot of things will come forward that will just uh, it's going to turn everything upside down it really will wow all right so now that takes it to another level that we may not just be talk about giants we could be talking about some type of uh uh different race uh reptilians maybe something else something other kind of i in it you know entity well you know what past fall in, in in genesis 6 of course uh the nephilim that were also after the flood it says they were before the flood and also after that if you look at what the uh, fallen angels corrupted animals and yeah. humanity right so that means you had great deformities in animals in the animal kingdom you had great deformities in people whether by height looks uh, mixture uh, lab experiments essentially and they were alive after the flood right um so it is not too strange uh, that they would come across all these things plus they have separated uh, what they have uh, most of these digs yield now, some pretty unique things like like 40. Who has a 40 foot sandal? Right. I believe they, they pulled those out. No. What was that about no. 2016? You're saying a sandal, a foot, a 40 foot, a 40 foot sandal, right? 40 foot uh, a sandal, sandal that was 40 feet long that evidently had been worn um, with the toe prints in it. Right. Things like that. That's not right? Bigfoot. There's, there's that's, no explanation. That's not Bigfoot. That. That's not no, Sasquatch. That's, not Bigfoot. that's something else. That's something else. That's something else. And and um, when it comes to the the bones that they find, you know, for example, the, the fossils, right? Um, most people are accustomed to science, and and fossils are found that are millions of years old, right? You don't find a fossil of a common day deer anywhere, right? But when Mount St. Helens blew, right? Do you not know that the mud and the water pressed down on some of the animals, the plant life and everything else, and it fossilized everything in less than five years? So some of these fossils, Pastor Paul, are not as old as what you think. Wow. They're not as old as, uh, as science yields. But two-ton axes, uh, a 400-pound fork, uh, like a eating utensil, four hundred pounds. <laughs> what, what, what do you do? That was in <laughs> Afghanistan, 
right? It was uh, it was almost like a cutlery set dug up in Afghanistan. Okay, you got to be talking about yeah. something that the, these creatures about the size of mountains. I mean, walking around. Are these I don't the know watchers? how big they were. Uh, yeah. I don't know how big they were, right? But the same uh, utensils that we have, they obviously had, but they were much bigger. So something happened here. And like I said, you know, it's going to be a lot of things brought forward uh, this year, uncovered this year. One of the biggest problems is they have no placement for this information, right? Uh, it scares people to death. These well, are yeah. undeniable things, right? If you if you saw an arrowhead that was the size of a human body, uh, what would you think about that? What are you going to do with that? And what was what were they shooting with an arrow that big? Uh, I I don't know. I mean, it's your. Uh, this is be. This is when. I mean, I've struggled with something thirteen to fifteen foot in size. I've struggled with that, but I know it's true. We got too much proof. And we got scriptures everywhere that tells us that these things were huge. But now you're talking about something that's off the charts, off the charts. I mean, yeah, almost well, godlike. You know. I mean, we're yeah. talking. Um, I I just think that. Um, you know, this world is is got layers and layers. I believe that Christians could know the truth, but the problem is we're educated or indoctrinated um, by the world, which teaches us to be experts on what does not exist, right? right? And let's go ahead and face it. Fantastic stories are all over the place. You don't know which ones to believe, right? right? right. And so it, it you, you can't go down too many rabbit holes. You you know, your life will be tied up, but um, some sort of... Uh, forthcoming individual group uh, will will they'll begin to all over the world begin to provide uh, evidence for some of these things uh, people have dinosaurs for example right yep that's clear evidence yeah in my opinion of nephilim it's clear yeah. evidence of yeah. nephilim um and it's important for some reason that they continue to introduce the reptilian species to every human being on earth every child knows about dinosaurs. Why? In every country, every child yes. has to learn about dinosaurs. But why? And um But they don't know, the, but they don't learn about giant but they don't learn about giants. That no well uh, you know you know what by not knowing by not knowing uh some of these dinosaurs by the way the the what people see in museums are not the actual bones. The actual bones of dinosaurs are irradiated right they're radioactive and people can't get really get near them so they make replications of them or they encapsulate those bones and things uh they have made up a lot of creatures right wow. that they scientifically deduced were real the bones are real um but some of the bones are so large they can't even there, there's no way they can use them right wow. um but uh, yeah and why would a dinosaur have focal cords well, I mean, I don't know if they were talking. You know, like a human being. Just like a human being. Um, cavities in the skulls were a bit different, right? They do match some of the elongated skulls. Different features like that that are far different than the animals that we have. And so, I mean, it's quite clear that something tampered with life on Earth, right? Yeah. Something. And we know something, what that was. Yeah, we know that. We know that. Uh, let me ask you this question, then. We'll, we'll move to another level here, another area. Um, King Charles has come down with some type of cancer, uh, went in for prostate uh, procedure, and then cancer was found. I don't know if it's prostate cancer or maybe some other type of cancer, because, you know, but it's certainly cancer in the kingdom. Now, uh, the Buckingham Palace has a hospital inside it, basically. Doc usually they don't go to hospitals. I mean, the hospital comes to them. So there's something significant maybe happening here. He's he has said he's not going to do any of his duties. He has basically turned that over to Prince William. Harry's flying home trying to see if they need him. Do you uh, what's what what have you heard so far? Is is there a significant problem here? Uh, in um, it's unusual. It is unusual. It's highly unusual. Well, for one, it's too it's too public, right? Right. And 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 that that uh, that that family. That that uh, kingship was in a bit of trouble as far as optics were concerned. This will elicit some sort of uh, sympathy, right, right? right? It's almost like it's planned. Um, and and then of course the two sons come back. Uh, one begins to exercise authoritative powers, you know, already. Right. So 
what are we seeing here? Are we seeing something that's, uh, you know, the natural course of, of, of a family or some orchestrated uh, thing? It's very difficult to tell with this. I would lean towards a, a very real happening that they knew about for some time um, that they are acting on, right, in their own interest. They're acting on it. A part of it could be to protect, because it's, it's Pastor, it, it should be, it's, is uh, the timing is a bit too close that stories are coming out, right? Right. A lot of people, a lot of rich people are being, are turning on each other, right? That's true. So what they're doing is there, there are a lot of court cases. People are being drugged into these court cases, which makes their information public, which is going to be highly distasteful in the public's eye uh, this year so- in 2024. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, he's been involved in some things. Yeah, he has. You know, he so has. You think, <clears throat> you know, you made a comment when uh, after Queen Elizabeth died that there's certain things can't be done except only under a king. That's right. Um, and do you think, no, that maybe, and that's that has certainly been established, and he was making his rounds, you know, whether it be in the climate, uh, you know, or the World Economic Forum or, or these different, you know, he had a voice. He has a voice. Yes. But – yeah. I feel like we might be since I sense a shift taking place and this the uh, the younger William young uh family of course his wife has been ill of course she just had surgery and was in the hospital 17 days and hope she's okay now but it you feel a shift I don't know I feel a shift this is a young prince who could be king and would have many years to establish uh, the kingdom and and uh, yep. and, par- and probably plays a role in the end days. Well, directives are given, and if you take note, he's been a loyalist, right? Yes, he uh, has. He's a loyalist, and he is not. He is. He is. He is. Uh, you know, he is a stickler for royal business. So, yep. if he has a directive, he'll not deviate. He's not going to go left or right, uh, no matter what the price is or cost is. He's not going to deviate. And if he has to, if it has to undo a nation, and so be it. And so that's the kind of guy, wow. um, the guy that's coming forward. Now, the, the sickness would allow for an out uh, right. to, install, to install a new, a brand new um, king there who is full of life and full of years, like you just said. Yeah, this could be an opportune thing there. And it does. It, 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 you can almost sense a shift. Yeah, uh, yeah, something that's uh, evidently timed, and something that the people are now gobbling up with sympathy. Right? Yeah, yeah, and that 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 could open up a door for the shift and and to be a a, a real easy transition, and yeah. King Charles can go away, basically, you know, without being scarred, and uh, and maybe all the different uh, rumors uh, of his life not having to be brought out right. we know andrew already has his issues and you know so what's going i just want to get your take on it because it i felt like we were watching this shift here and i think it affects other nations you brought it up it affects other nations yes. uh and let's while we're talking about other nations let's just do that for a second israel the pressure's on bb like never before they all want him to stop uh yeah. he says that we're not going anywhere we we're going to finish this we're almost there a few more months and it's over. Hamas is done. Meanwhile, 31 rockets this evening crashed, came out of Hezbollah, out of southern Lebanon, hit the little town of Moran, Israel. Uh, are we getting ready to see another front open up fully? Well, Pastor, well, I'll tell you something. The uh, just to just to uh, bring some light on this subject, the U.S. Navy in in in. Um, Allied forces are really, they really had their hands busy with the Houthis. Imagine that. Yeah, they have. That's unbelievable. It's very tasking. And it's not, it's, it's not like it used to be. It is not like it used to be. So these guys have access to, uh, you know, North Korean technology. They have access to, um, obviously, Russian slash Iranian technology. Um, yep. And they have lots of it, you know, stockpiled. Yep. They have already defied, or let's just say Iran acts in a, not, not so much a, a uh, totalitarian position 
uh, with the Houthis, but more of an advisory panel for the Houthis. And the Houthis continue to engage in their own, you know, their own uh, uh, operations, but it's becoming very tasking to the U.S. Navy. Um, Israel, they want, they want BB out of there. They want to, uh, the world is calling for disarmament of Israel, right? They want Israel to essentially totally and absolutely surrender. Uh, this is, the, the word is echoing too much in too many different countries now, um, which is very dangerous for Bibi Netanyahu. It's very dangerous. It's extremely dangerous, right? So so none of us should be, should overlook that. No, that is, right. Anybody ever got the chance, they will take him out. Right? You're right. This is, this is an active thing now, um, and it's very close to home. Hezbollah, Hezbollah has has been probing for a while now, probing. And they have always had the capacity to sneak in uh, some of the fast movers uh, into uh, Israel. Right? Yeah. These demonstrations, these probes, every time they hit Israel, believe me, they go, they, they go back and, 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 and they get all the data. All this data is going to more than a few places. Iran is collating, putting this data together. Perhaps because when they do officially uh, attack, it's going to be from a multinational force that will go into Israel, right, all so, at one time. So you don't see it just being the, the uh, Hezbollah you know, Hamas and now Hezbollah. You see, you see a bunch of them: Iran, Syria, yeah. Iraq, yeah. Russia, everybody. For example, Hamas has not quit. They haven't. Quit. No, I know they, they gather. Haven't. They're gathering intel, right? These right. guys probe. They gather intel. They share information. Uh, this is why some of their attacks have been so precise. Right? They're not televising uh, some of these precise attacks. They're not televising right. the, the, the cost of life involved. We have soldiers, that maybe uh, soldiers that have died already on ships that are, you know, they're not, this isn't, that's not supposed to happen, right? So we have a casualty count building up. Yes, and uh, this thing is broadening. It is worse than what they're televising, far worse. People are fatigued already. Commanders are, are, are every time they talk, commanders are saying this is serious. You know, this is serious. This is getting is getting worse, um, and, and which is why the Republican Party in the USA wants um, they they need uh, Biden to do something swiftly, right? Because they can right. see it getting out of control. It's spreading. It's getting bad. Uh, so we have a we have a real situation here. And, and my opinion is, I do believe in history. It's going to be recorded that World War III has already begun. We're, we're going to see the dates of 2023 for World War III, right? Wow. Uh, because uh, normally, that. normally when wars start, not everybody is involved from the onset, right? It, it kind of, you have this, you know, certain people involved like Israel and, and uh, uh, but then when the big military factions, they get involved then everybody recognizes it, right? Right now, we have a war that's not recognized right. as a world war. But in fact, that's precisely what we're dealing with. It is. A world war. China's it is next. a multi-front war. Yes. I mean, you're right. China, Taiwan. I mean, even in this bill that they didn't pass, but this bill that they were fighting over, a lot of money was going to Ukraine. A lot was going to go to Israel. A lot of it was going to go down to the southern border, but quite a bit of it was going to Thailand to protect themselves against an invasion from China. It's inevitable, isn't it? Is this the yeah. year, 2024, yeah. is this the year China makes some kind of military move to try to s squeeze Taiwan or start to try to get them to concede that they need to join? The, uh, is this the year? Well, I believe that China's already begun. They've already, um, they've all but controlled uh, what's actually operating with Taiwan, right? They understand the U.S. is involved, <clears throat> but they're controlling. They've kicked up patrols in the waters. They have uh, certain certain guard positions, right? Yeah. Right? No-go zones for everybody else. Uh, China is certainly squeezing, and nobody can push China's hand back. They're also testing us. When we go in and attempt to intervene, attempt to probe them, they probe us back Yeah. Uh, uh, even closer. We've had exchanges 
with China unofficially already. And um, so, so we have a lot of things, a lot of things are moving. A lot of mechanisms are now moving and colliding. So we have an issue, we have a situation. So your statement is, is uh, probably so this year. You know, I, I do believe we'll see an escalation. Um, it, it's unfortunate, but we could see an escalation beyond the point that anybody would like. It seems as if uh, you're right, and it and it's the timing is setting up, no doubt about it. Um, so we got to watch this. Speaking of Russia and Ukraine, uh, Russia disqualified the guy who was the number one candidate. That was, you know, their election for president is next month. Putin had had already got written one of his challenger. He's, he's sitting in prison for nine years. He'd been poisoned twice. There was a new guy who's an anti-war candidate, and he was rising in the polls. Well, he just got disqualified today. They said that uh, he's not qualified to even be on the ballot. This, it's funny that that happened the same day that they were arguing at the Supreme Court whether Trump should be on the ballot. Uh, your thoughts? Well, in Russia, it's a repeat of what normally happens, right? Uh, Putin always gets rid of his uh, opposing <laughs> folks. He does. That's right. just the way he works. Um, he's 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 got a lot of blood on his hands. But th- this Biden issue, you know, it should be obvious. Some things should be obvious to people today. It should be very obvious today. Number one, um, speaking about Biden, he is uh, he's he's up there in age, yes, right? Yes. And so. It's very difficult to be at that age and hold on to things. And cognitive decline can happen within the within the with a span of about eight months to anybody. Right? Anybody at that age, it can happen within an eighth month span. I mean, a severe significant, drop. a significant. That's right. Yeah, okay. that's right. And so nobody, nobody that age is off the list, right? So there, there should be real concerns. But as far as Colorado you know, make that move towards Trump. Now that sets a very dangerous precedent yeah. because here's what would happen. Suppose by, I don't know, some, I don't know. It's a, because it's a slim chance uh, that they're going to have what they want to have. But suppose Colorado gets away with that and they go, they remove him from the ballot. Then all of a sudden the red states are going to remove Biden from the ballot. Yeah, they will. Then other blue states are going to have the, they're going to have the burden of, uh, of being uniform with Colorado and remove Trump off a further ballot, which means states or or the uh, let's just say the 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 judges of those states will have power so much so that they can they can force the outcome of elections. They can determine who can and cannot win. Uh, an election. No, nope, that's not going to happen. But you see how sticky that is. Yeah. If Colorado gets away with this, right, other states will follow suit one way or the other. And if that happens, then a state can dictate who can be president. Yeah. That can never be. I can't. Can never be. I can't see and the so, Supreme Court. I, you know, I listened to that. All that. Uh, what was it? Almost three hours. I listened to about an hour and a half of the argument that these uh, Colorado attorneys were, were trying to do it. And, and, and all nine of the Supreme Court justices were pushing back. I mean, it, it, uh, of course, it, yes. it's like, look, you're, you're, you can't have one state deciding who the president of the United States is going to be. And, <sighs> you know, so I think they were really overreaching. I think Colorado, Maine and these other states, you know, it's all going to I would say the Supreme Court uh, shut that down. But that's not the end of it. The, 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 you have more trials coming to disqualify Trump. Do you think that that's going to end or are they going to, will they actually convict him of something? They will attempt. They will try, but take note of something. Take note. Um, you know, it's the old trick to keep the pressure on in hopes to discourage the forward momentum of an individual. They've already tried to change public opinion through prosecution. That did not work. And that's a very clear, you know, tactic there. It didn't work. And so they, you know, they really should. They're going to continue to do this uh, until they cannot. But what I see happening is, is you know, you can, you can, at first it looks like they're upholding the law, but then it's a bit too much. And when you go overboard and you're working by ego and pride, your plan's going to fail every single time. And so um, in this case, 
there, you know, Trump could could be elected president even as a convicted felon. And that he just might very well happen as president as a convicted felon. In which case, you know, if that happens, here's why they don't want that to happen. Though they're trying to stop it. If that ever happens, somebody will come along and pardon Trump from. <laughs> yeah. from that status right they will right. They'll overturn it because he served as president right you can't have that and so uh they know it's a lost cause is so what they're trying to do is 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 find every single reason they can if you notice uh, back when he was president with the um all these people they came out suing each other right, right. i mean all across the board lots of people going to jail yeah well, it's going to happen again on a brand new level and they're going to hope to pull people into it they need some notable convictions of well-known people right to try another tactic they will try it so these other folks are going to simply be you know they're parts in a machine no matter how rich they are somebody's pulling the strings behind the scene and you're going to have some high-powered individuals they're going to jail well at least they'll say they're going to jail nobody's ever going to confirm that Right. But uh, because they're going to continue to try this now. But this is dangerous. We're in dangerous times because look at what we actually face. If if say if Trump and Biden for some reason are still on the ballot. Right. People vote. And let's say let's say that uh, Trump wins. Right. Uh, He wins. You know, and I know that if he wins. They're going to do the exact same thing that was done to them. They're going to say, you know, somebody cheated somewhere, this, that, and the other. It's going to put civilians up in arms. That's what's going to happen. People will defend the outcome for Trump, number one. Let's say Trump loses. Let's say he loses. And Biden wins. Now, even the Democrats understand that that President Biden is going through a severe cognitive decline. Big time. We all know. And so if he wins... What's that? Then what in the world are people thinking? So they're going to say, well, something is not right there. People will be up in arms at one another again. So in both those scenarios, you're going to have the civilian populace up in arms at each other. Right. But there's one scenario nobody suspects. What's that? One scenario that can absolutely happen. If a medical crisis overcomes the president. Now, he's he's. In his 80s. Yeah, right? it could happen. So guess what? At any moment, they can say the president is having a medical crisis, whether he is or not. Guess what happens? So a brand new candidate that nobody knows about comes out of the shadows right to the forefront. And it will be legal, 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 right? To go up against whoever. I'm just telling you what I know. So that means at least Biden off the hook, his president so are you saying... is still saved and intact, <coughs> but a brand new a brand, a brand new, new, I mean, a brand candidate. new person. That's uh, right. I mean, you know, we hear things, and I'm, you're not talking Kamala Harris either. I mean, no, we, no. Okay, no. but she could end up being president here in this, this for a few months this year before it's all said and done. Uh, if this medical emergency or a medical uh, declaration or something happens, or or Article Twenty Five or whatever, but we know that they're looking at California Governor Gavin Newsom. As one candidate, we hear that Michelle Obama is another one they'd love to draft into this. Uh, so you're saying maybe there's someone else or another one or two, but you're saying somebody fresh, somebody brand new, no baggage uh, could be brought into right. the table and, and try to take Trump down using a brand new uh, – the, the Rock, right. uh, uh, right. Johnson, uh, I forgot his first name, but uh, the Rock, you know, they, they're trying to get him to run. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, that won't happen. But no. but but with if the president has some sort of medical crisis, right? Yeah, they never have to show his face again. They never have to report, or he never has to uh, go through anything again. So effectively, he can still be president, right? Right. Uh, or have presidential powers with his VP for the you know for the rest of that duration. Right. But you'll have a brand new guy. Who does not have to go through the crucible um, yeah. that they normally have to go through to be a candidate for president of yeah. the United States, and it could be anybody. It, it will, it, you know. What if one of these corporate individuals comes forward? Okay. Who, by the way, has already really established uh, quite an empire outside of government. What if one of them steps forward? 
right? Like a Jeff, somebody that like a Jeff somebody Bezos. with a good track record, okay. right? Somebody who's serious, somebody who understands, you know, uh, quite a few things. That could just shake the waters up terribly. Yeah, that really could. Yeah, and and it would also give people a focal point of something new, of something that has longevity. Whole because different. let's go ahead and face it. The one thing against President Trump is his age. Yes. Because because four years from now, right? Four, yeah. eight years from now, hey, we're back in the same seat again, right? We're back in the same position again. And, uh, you know, let's go ahead and face it. As you age, you're not as sharp as what you were when you were younger. Doesn't matter no, who you are. Don't matter who you are. That's uh, right. It just starts going away and it will show and they will pounce on that. And the people, even some of the Republicans out there, if they had a qualified younger candidate that was actually qualified, somebody who's not vindictive and, and, and right. who has the right, you know, quality sense, this, that, and the other, um, a lot of people would float over to this new candidate. But it would have to be somebody who could do what Trump has done and more, right? Because Trump actually. He, he was a performer, so he did right. things, right? He was always active. Right. And and that's what they're looking for, somebody who can get things, somebody who will actually stand up and start working, not just sit there and point fingers, you know, the, this stuff. So, uh, yeah. But, but you got some this, guys. With the you Biden got, issue. Yeah. <clears throat> You've got some that. guys out there. You've got Jeff Bezos, uh, you know, from Amazon. you got Bill Gates from Microsoft. you got Elon Musk. Uh, and, you know, you got you got some billionaire, multi, multi, multi mm. billionaires They're They got they all seem to have some baggage, but, uh, you know, they, they are a force. And then how come uh, Robert Kennedy Jr., uh, the, the Democrats, don't even, I know he I know he finally just went independent, but man, they don't even want to put him on. Tele- they, they won't even talk to this guy. Uh, is he just because he represents the old Kennedy dynasty and they just can't deal with that? I mean, wh- wh- I think I, I, the, the the Democrats, um, some of the representatives of the Democratic Party, bad people see on TV and everything else, they, they are vicious. Uh, sometimes they are. And it's almost like they want they're not used to people speaking outside of a certain type of language. Right. They cut everybody off if you don't speak uh, a certain type of language and they don't. Robert Kennedy Jr. He keeps referring back to right. the secrets, you know, certain secrets of America. They don't want to hear. They don't that. want to hear that. They don't, they don't want, to want those out. That, no, right? no, they don't. All they want to hear is somebody who can speak about, you know, the stuff they have overcome. Right. That's what they want. And and so, uh, you know, it, it's a tact. It's politics. That's what politics is. Right. And um, but, yeah, they they don't. They Speaking of that, that what do you think about Tucker Carlson? Okay, he was in Russia. It looks like he must have interviewed Vladimir Putin. I, I heard today he met with Edward Snowden. Uh, and at some point, Tucker's going to come out with these interviews. What do you, what do you think his reasoning is? Uh, is? Is he just wanting to get back at everyone and say, look, I can go where places you can't go? Or what's his agenda here? Well, he, he's not. He's a pretty smart guy. Yeah, he, he is. is. Yes, he is. But, but he also made it, right? Yeah. He made it. He knows how to make it. He knows he's protecting his uh, future, right? Right. If you take money away, these guys wouldn't do what they do. Let's right. put it that way. Okay, so. Yeah, they got to have cash to operate the way they operate. Yeah. And, and, and without Fox as his platform, he has to keep creating a platform. Yeah. And he's doing, yes. it, he's doing it with his uh, ability to get a door open that's right. that maybe others can't open. So, that's right. yeah, I, I'll go along with that. Okay, now, the stone steps, I, I mentioned that earlier. I really think that, I, you know, based on what God showed you, you, you know, four years ago, or maybe it was even longer than that, um, and I thought about it today when I was looking at the Supreme Court building, but really I'm thinking that the J6, the Jack Smith uh, t- uh, trial uh, with Trump, that uh, we may see the stone steps before 24 is over. Uh, and you're saying that won't well, – are you saying that won't matter? He will he could still be president even with uh, five felonies? Well, he could with a conviction. He can yeah. still be uh, president. But, Pastor, they, they have people working, digging, looking. And uh, unfortunately, let's go ahead and face this, this one thing. You know, at some point, at some point, 
evil, right, is going to overcome the certain goods in these kingdoms, dealing with the kingdoms, not with, not with Christians directly. Now I'm talking about the will of, of, of good versus the will of evil, because we do have dark kingdoms rising. We do have that man of perdition and the road is being paved for this guy to come forward, uh, which means for, for a season, just for a season, God will allow that dark kingdom to rise in order for that to happen. They're going to have to have their way. They're going to have to be able to say yeah. peace and safety. They're going to have to be able to, you know, institute their will over everybody else's. And, but, you know, so that means folks who represent uh, some of the cries of the people like Trump does, right? Despite of what anybody thinks, um, Trump does represent a certain portion of the populace yeah, he does. who had no voice whatsoever. Right. They, yeah. they had yeah. no voice. And so he is he, you know, nobody's perfect in in he wasn't raised in politics or anything like that. He's a business guy. Right. And so but they he's he's dangerous to the institution because of his deal making abilities, because of how he can maneuver people, right? How he can communicate or connect with people. They speak legal jargon. Nobody wants to hear that. It makes people <laughs> yeah. sick. They you don't. turn on television, you start hearing them, you know, pronounce yeah, everything we don't in specific hear it. ways. It makes them sick. And you get sick to you. you like I've heard all this before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, you've heard it all before. Yeah. But you you hear President Trump, he's engaging. Yeah. And and so you can actually hear him, but you start hearing these other people. Right. Uh, they speak the same monotone stuff. And right. you know, people are tired of that stuff. So he's a huge, huge threat. They don't want him to ever have uh, uh, be in that position again where he can maneuver people because he'll get even more. And uh, they're going to do everything they can to stop him. Well, we just they seen will. him pull off one. And that was these bipartisan the in the Senate. Uh, some of the rhino Republicans and the Democrats got together and they, and they were going to bring forth a bill that they thought was going to just fly right through. No problem. And then Trump said, it's a bad deal, bad deal. And so the next thing you know, the house said, look, yep. we don't want that. We don't want to yep. touch this thing. Yep. And that, that has got the establishment in Washington furious that they're, they're probably thinking this guy is not even in the white house and he's controlling right. the house of right. representatives. They, they don't like that. No. They don't like that at all. And it, it, it does. Listen, though, but the people, if the people support him, they can't say anything. Can no, they? they can't say a thing. No, that's what they're they saying. Can't. And so that's the war right there. You have people who want one thing and government who interprets the will of the people. They can't get away with that anymore. You know, when somebody stands up there and says, well, what the people really want. Well, how do you know? You didn't call those people up. You didn't. You didn't talk to them. <laughs> right. And people know they're they're seeing right through it. But President Trump, he can actually connect with people. Amen. You know, it's not it's not easy being involved in sales and things like that. You can't do that and not know people. You've got to know people. Right. To engage in sales and and of course Donald Trump is that uh, he's that individual. He's that so guy. They don't like him. They don't like him. He's a threat to that that dark plus. Let's go ahead and look at the truth. Can you want to look at the truth? Sure. When it comes to agendas, right, to abomination type agendas, then who owns those agendas? Well, it's not the it's not the conservatives. No, it's not the conservatives. It's not. It isn't. And so it's a, it's is they continue to push that stuff. So you're looking at people who, and believe me, they support what people don't understand. Past Paul, the Super Bowl. For example, the Super Bowl. Okay. You have you have Taylor Swift. Right. They keep showing, they keep showing, they keep showing, they keep showing. Right. So she's a favorite of what's established. Right. You think that could determine the outcome of the Super Bowl? Absolutely. You think it has determined the outcome of the Super Bowl? It has definitely because, put Kansas uh, City. It's in gonna be a lot of introduction of demonic things this Super Bowl directly to the people and the people are not going to care. They're not, I'm wow. telling you right now, you're what, what people are going to, you know what they're going to see. They're going to see a lot of, um, almost like a underworld princess being friends with demons will be part of that theme. Wow. Or conjuring them up will be part of that theme. and people, they're not going to care. They're not. Wow. They, they will not care. 
and it's it's going to be happening right before their faces. They won't even care. We've seen that in the Grammys. We see that sometimes that kind of stuff uh, a lot of times in these big events. And so we'll have our eyes open. Uh, I'm also going to be watching the, the, the Super Bowl commercials because a lot of stuff, predictive programming goes on to, in there uh, a lot of times. So The richest guys in the world right, mm -hmm. are involved in entertainment. They pay for entertainment. Um, and then, of course, because they have to make all that stuff before they make anybody makes a dime. They're, they paid people before anybody makes a dime. And if you look at the books on entertainment, that stuff costs trillions of dollars, not billions, trillions of dollars. Unbelievable. And so they're paying that. Right. So you better believe they have they have they have craft over that whole thing. Right. To cause people because what they want the people to do is feel a specific way when they entertain, when they view entertainment. And um, for the most part, it works. And it, it is, uh, it is, but even that, 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 that will, that, that should be obvious to everybody this time around, you know, we'll it, be, things are going to become quite we'll be, brazen. We'll be watching. I'm going to take you to Iceland for a second. Uh, Mike, if you don't mind uh, third time, third time's a charm. This volcano oh, erupts again. Yeah. It's a two-mile fissure. Won't I they mean, listen? What's going on, Mike? They won't listen. Well, you know when they said, oh, yeah, slow it down. It'll be over shortly. That's not what we said on your show. Right, basketball. right. You didn't. And um, so this thing is, is has multiple chambers underneath it. Right? I'm telling you, this is a – that's the last place – you want to erupt because it really, um, it really demonstrates. It's not going to stop, the, is it? You don't see it stopping. No, it's, it, it really is about, uh, I'd say about um, seven or eight yellow stones stacked <laughs> on top of each other. <laughs> Whoa, are you serious, Mike? You yeah. know how big yes. that is to say that. But you're saying that whole that whole Iceland and, and area is really nothing but one big, huge yeah. uh, volcano. You're, you're literally... You're literally looking at chambers stacked on top of each other, each the size of Yellowstone. What? Are you serious, though? Really? Yes. You're not going to find that in the data. You're not. No. But through observation and through the sheer crumbling power of this thing, people will see it. Mm. They'll see it. Because, it's because they'll say, it's, it's when that land, if that land, if, if those... If that continues to open up basketball, that's directly relatable to the Atlantic tear, right? Yeah, and we had an earthquake. That's going to be the beginning of the end. We had an earthquake today, just uh, just a little bit off the coast of Cape Canaveral, Cape Canaveral here in Florida, 4.0. It's the largest earthquake in Florida in about 50 years, okay, just off the coast. And I was, and I thought of you. I thought of the Atlantic Ocean, and you talking about this huge, uh, you know, uh, uh, fault line that's running through the Atlantic. And then now you're bringing up Iceland blowing up. Is this tied to this? Is is this is it tied to that? You, we're gonna have uh, the Atlantic that crack in the Atlantic grows every year, still spitting up nickel. Nickel is coming up from this thing, and. Um, Iceland, unfortunately, is is a all throughout the years. It has proven to be problematic at best. Um, I want to know the worst case scenario, but this this those chambers underneath Iceland, uh, perhaps Paul, they, in fact, on that entire line, uh, if you were to go from north to south, is is very dangerous and volatile area. It will cause if it continues to crack, it's going to cause a plate shift, a big plate shift, right? Now you're a plate shift. Forget about a big earthquake. Okay. Think about think about a bunch of uh, you know four to five to six point zero earthquakes nonstop for about three days. No, I mean yes. okay. So uh, you're okay. talking about a rumbling, a, a real some real problems here right real rumbles because in, in, in people they know about the big earthquakes they know about the 8.0s and 9.0s a lot of people that's what they're looking for but they have forgotten that if you have a small 4.5 earthquake for a much longer duration you've essentially had three or four 9.0 uh, 9.0 
earthquakes, right? It will do much more damage. Um, in Iceland's case, it, it is so it's stacked, but it's very deep, right? Now that Atlantic crack is very deep, and both of them obviously are, are coming from that same uh, internal point. Both of them are. So both are tied to a telltale sign of a continental instant continental uh, shift if they were to continue to crack like this. So the activity in Iceland is is just not going to stop. It's not going to stop. Wow. It's going to continue to. Well, right uh, here behind me, this is the first time it erupted. This picture behind me is actually the first time. It is the, it is the second time was big. Th this one, huge. It's bigger than this. Uh, and, uh, I don't, and what you're saying is the potential, the potential, the kinetic energy that's building could be catastrophic, cataclysmic, could destroy part of Northern Canada. Am I right by saying that? Oh yeah, good. It has, it does because it is, I'll say it again. It's like seven yellow stones stacked on top of each other, right below that, you know, major landmass. Of course, obviously that's going to be disputed. Right. But I'm telling you now, it'll start doing things that nobody expected. It will, because the more magma that flows up this, this thing, there's not enough. What is that? The, the, the eruptions that it's had right now does right. not constitute the sheer amount of magma that's found in the chambers. You know, it's kind of like New York City. Uh, nobody thinks of a, uh, of, a, of a magma chamber when you think of New York City. They've got a giant magma chamber below New York City. Now, how long before that thing surfaces? Right? I, that, that right there. And that would be – there's 20 million people over there. I mean, you know – in that vicinity, maybe more than it, that. It's not going to stop the magma. Magma continues to churn and eat away at the rock. It's coming up. The pressure is building. The solar winds are feeding uh, this earth energy every single second of every single day. And it's overcharged. You know, with that, all that energy, all the solar winds, everything that the earth is capturing coming into the poles, is is being is that's heat is generating heat which causes magma right to expand to become hotter to eat away at more and more rock right so we're we're this this uh, cycle is not going to go backwards it's not the earth is overcharged right now it's estimated it would take 400 years for the earth to 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 cool back down from where it's been 400 years of heating it would take to dissipate the energy it has collected in less than about i believe they said five years i believe the calculations are five years so it has it is uh essentially taking in enough energy to last the earth 400 years of internal heating right think so, of that so let's think of that okay that's just off the chart so now let's let's take this put this all in perspective we have wars and rumors of wars right now that seem to be going off the charts, headed toward World War III. But meanwhile, we have earthquakes and volcanoes breaking records. We have asteroids. Matter of fact, tonight, we got an asteroid tonight. I didn't even bring it up. It's going to miss us by 0 0.6 lunar distance. In other words, about half the distance from the moon. This is happening almost every day now. We yeah. know that, we've, that, that Apophis is on its way, the god of chaos. We don't know how close, 18,000 miles, you know, what if they're off, what if their calculations off a of hair? I mean, it's, and it's bringing a lot of rocks with it. I think it's going to be a Revelation 8-8 uh, prophecy, Wormwood prophecy could easily happen. So what I'm saying is, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Does man blow himself up or, or really, really create a radiation environment uh, with nuclear uh, detonations? Or does the earth itself melt with fervent heat like it says in the book of Second Peter chapter 3 uh, from the sun with all of its, you know, the sun. Planet X, we've been talking about it. What's the effects on pl of Planet X? I think we're watching it. Volcanoes, frigid temperatures, hot summers you can't breathe, uh, straight line winds, this atmospheric river in California. I don't know. Where do you want to start? I mean, locusts. I mean, where do you start? It's, uh, you know what, the war, the war is coming. It is coming. And the, look, look at how it was when we were children, right? Okay. How blue the skies were, how yeah. different everything was compared to right now. People just get used to it, basketball, right? They get used to it. 
California, the atmospheric rivers that are yeah, coming in. Yeah. They have what? They have five more that are coming through. No, five, five, no, five, five, no, yes. no, yeah, five more. Mike, so, these two was the worst. 13 inches of rain in 12 hours. Are you telling me there's five more of these type of atmosphere? And I'll also say, here's something odd. I'm going to tell you right now. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. They're going to look back on these days and say, I wish we would have kept every single drop. Well, that's true. They had one year's worth of, well, the, pretty much one year's worth of rain in one night, right? I, I know they, they said the accurate numbers are three quarters, but you may as well say they had a year's worth of rain yeah. in one night, right? So they have five more events coming that they can see, five more that they can see. Are they going to be um, pretty soon here? I mean, are we going to see them? Yeah, oh, spring? yeah, they're forming now. They're, okay. you know, they're coming now. They're going to be these atmospheric rivers back to back, but it's a blessing. Arizona is going to be hit with it too. Arizona is going to have water problems, but it's a blessing pastor, because after all this water, after yeah. all these atmospheric rivers, yeah, the water is going away. Even in the midst of a water event, we can't drink salt water. No, we I can't know. Do that. And is that the, yeah. that's that uh, intrusion, uh, salt water intrusion. Is that what? Well, yeah, we have that. We've been, that's been a constant problem. We can drink salt water, though. I mean, Israel's taking it, and they're they're taking the ocean water, and they're making. Well, they have desalination plants. Why don't we? Right, uh, we do, we do, but they're not. Think of it this way: if salt water takes over, right? If it really takes over, it's going to cause damage uh, to these coastal cities. Unfortunately, yeah, you're right. So a desalination plant, there are certain mechanisms you can't have, you know, fully saturated. Plus, and oh, and also, salt water kills vegetation. Yeah, you're right. right? Yes, you're right. Uh, so we're going to have to face all that. It's happening. And, and most, the Mississippi River, right? This year, take a good look at it, right? Take a good look this year. That's all I can say. Take a real good look. Take pictures. Do Because it's going to dry up. Because, uh, uh, you know, things are changing. An earthquake or, or it's going to dry up or, it, you know. We just won't. We're not going to have it. And if we're, you know what? We're out of time. We're out of time. We're, we're a bit too laxed. We're out of time. There are people right now, literally, literally, they cannot sleep, Pastor Paul, because they don't know what the next move should well, be. That's true. That's true. But they're, they're, they're trying to Are stop you talking or stave off. Are there scientists yeah, that they're can't trying sleep? To stave off. Uh, they're trying to stave off or come up with some solution. Here's the issue, though. They know that things are happening rapidly. Every time they look in one direction, it comes from behind them. Every time they go behind them, it comes from the left or to the right. It, so many things are starting to happen all at one time. They cannot keep track, and they certainly can't help to avoid it. The Army Corps of Engineers are overtasked with the Mississippi, with the East Coast, and now uh, Washington State. Right, they're overtasked with that, uh, trying to prop up the coastal waterways. They're overtasked. The, the the U.S. the East Coast of the U.S. the entire East Coast is being propped up right now. Right, the Army Corps of Engineers is hi highly active in that. Um, it's just not working out. It's, it's been a fight for many years. It's not working out. Mike, we also talk a little bit here of of the Earth wobbling core of the earth not spinning um the binary system planet x or, or the binary system that's that's affecting our sun uh these things are not slowing down are they mm -mm. and and no. has the core of the no, earth has it stopped did it, did it no okay it's still going okay. it's still going but but we're, we're we're just having some strange effects pastor paul with uh um, essentially overcharging the earth right the magnetosphere for example yeah. is what 10 or 11 earth earth out so if you take 10 or 11 earths on the bow shock looking at the bow shock the magnetosphere is about 10 or 11 earths out it's that's pretty way big too and in far. the back is pretty big is that pretty far? well that's that's how far the magnetosphere goes that's natural it's how far it goes and it's being compressed on the front side yeah you know, facing the sun but it, it it normally is about you know ten or eleven out. So is that and normally the the TV yeah. right, the energy that's being found in that area is a constant. You know that energy has doubled in the last uh, five years. So the Earth has taken on a lot more power. It will cause magnetosphere to fail or shift in a way. Right? It, it, well, the it, the bow shock 
yeah. is not going to maintain. It's just not going to maintain. It's a miracle that that um, we have that bowel shock today. And, well, and radiation is right. going to keep building then, isn't it? Uh, it yeah. It, it, with Inside the planet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to have dormant volcanoes wake up like the big one, Tom O'Malley. Um <laughs> And other ones. I'll have to continue to mention that because that's going to be one of the number one killers of this planet. You, you bring, you're very good at bringing things up and then, and then coming back, bring up again, bring again, because when you know something is going to take place. And then it might be three, four, five years later, the very thing you brought up happens. Um, uh, a, a lot of people don't have the patience to wait, to step back and wait and see what's developing. Uh, like, for instance, you know, I know the dreams you had about the stone steps and the coffin. I think the stone steps were really at the brink of it here before the year is over. I think you're going to see Trump being uh, brought down. Uh, be, he's going to be indicted by something. I promise you he's going to get some type of conviction. I don't know if that keeps him out of the White House or not, but I'm going to say this. He will get convicted of something. That's part of the plan. It's partly why Nikki Haley's hanging around, just in case. Uh, she's trying to be there to catch catch him when he falls i guess and take his spot but besides that the coffin the coffin is this is the what's your thoughts on that because that's a significant event you know this of all of them i i really don't want to see the stone steps because of what comes after because of what i saw the people do yeah what did you see remind us well right right during the stone steps People were implacable. You could not make peace with people during that time. They were, they were, they were extreme either for or against. That's right. They couldn't. And at that same time, evidently, uh, missiles started coming into the USA during that time from the air. Right? From Russia? So we, who's, 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 who's sending those in here? China? Is, is, I, I think that everybody was trying to send them. <laughs> That's what I believe. I do. Listen, yeah. which means at the time of when we're so turn inwardly right we have a lot of enemies the usa has a lot of enemies they're going to take advantage the first chance they get you you know there are admirals who cannot sleep because of that they know that right there there are are people who they're generals who cannot sleep because of china because they know the power of china and they know how china probes and they know what we're facing they know what happens if we're ever distracted we're going to be hit from all sides if we're ever distracted, wow. right? Because we have essentially commanded the world. And we have essentially done that, commanded the world for a long time, for a long time. But now it's like we're losing our responsible position, right? You take the police out of a city, you're going to have chaos in that city. And that's essentially what's happening. Is somehow we're being disarmed. Somehow we've lost our reputation. Somehow, right? There's no respect for for the military of the usa anymore somehow this has happened that the houthis would attack a u.s naval battleship right somehow somehow things have changed that's crazy drastically and they're doing it boldly yes, as they are as if they've got yes, they new technology or they've been given at least better yes, sophisticated are. equipment and and we still seem like our hands are tied behind our back am, am i wrong by saying that but it is Many of them said what the who some of the tactics the Houthis have used were not expected by us. We did not expect the Houthis to have those tactics and to be this strong. We did not expect Hezbollah to be able to penetrate things they have penetrated. We did not expect Iran to be so crafty as far as technology is concerned. Right. So we're hitting these walls where we did not expect our enemies to be as mature and as advanced and as lethal as they are, which means we underestimated everything. Our That's arrogance. It it's arrogancy on our That's part. That's what it means. We sat like we, we, we sat like kings for too long until we begin to complain. You know, it's the old adage. If, if somebody has freedom too long and they're too blessed. Why do we start complaining? Israel did it. Uh, you know, all of us have examples in our lives, and we do the same thing. We start complaining about everything, right? Until the person who loses everything, and they get the smallest thing, they're, they're, they're so thankful. And it's the, it is it's the adage of the restaurant, Pastor Paul. You get a hungry guy in a restaurant, 
you can serve him anything. He'll eat it. He's going to be happy. very thankful. Right. But you get somebody who's full going into a restaurant, you serve them something, they're going to send it back 20 times. They're, they're going to complain about everything. Why? Because they're not hungry. Right. When you're hungry, you're thankful for the food you get. Sure. When you're full, you complain about the food you get. And America has been full for a long time. Right? Yep. The only way we can ever uh, get our position back is be hungry. We're going to have to be made hungry for a little season so that we can be thankful once again, so we can be put back in our position. I think that that's coming. I think that by our own demise, by our own uh, corruption, by our own spoiledness, and and uh, and our own, we have turned from God. I yes, mean, we, we got so many people that are in seats of authority that are committing abominations or promoting abominations, and I really mean this to the to the point that it's stench in the nostrils of God. And I don't know how much longer we think we can actually just get away with this and not have the judgment of God at some point. You know, oh, I, it's coming. It's coming. It's got to be. You can't. It's God's coming. not mocked whatsoever. Man mm-hmm. soweth that shall it's he also coming. reap. And America is sowing seeds of disgust, seeds of disrespect toward their heavenly father, toward the creator. And you can't get away with that forever. Um, we're not the only nation. We got a lot of good people in this country. And maybe that and the fact we stand with Israel and some of those things is the only thing holding back the judgment of God. But at some point we got to turn we got to either repent or perish i mean at some point am i right yeah and it's true we we've got to get it you know we've 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 turned god has his word right yeah. it's the word i know i seek god i want to know what god wants that's what i want right i want, I want his word but now in this day and age, Pastor Paul, it's too many, too many things going out with the individual's philosophy, individual's idea, the individual's this, the individual's that. And so they've just totally kicked God's word out to the curbs. And they don't want to hear God's word. They want no, to hear their don't. own word, you know. And um, But the Lord has correction for that. For the righteous sake, I believe he will correct America. It, it, nobody's going to like it. But it, at least he'll do it. I mean, that's better than being be a, a nation. Correction. The yeah. Bible says a nation that forgets God will be turned into hell. The, the Bible says that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. That's right. I mean, this is these are the reality here that we thank God that we've got people right here on this broadcast that love the Lord. That thank mm-hmm. God there are Christians throughout this nation who are still praying and believing and standing on the word. And God sees that and he honors that. Um, but at the same time, uh, we got to have some repentance. We need revival. We really do. And it's not just only us. Take a look at Europe. Look at the godlessness. Look what's going on around the world. Jesus oh, yeah. Jesus has got to be coming back soon, Mike. He's coming back soon. Well, i tell you what. All these things we're about to see, the hostilities, the, the, the spiritual manifestations, uh, it's going to be needful. If, if we didn't need it, God would not permit it. And, and so, but we do need it. Amen. And so people ought to get ready for it. Things like Planet X, they can call it what they want to call it. They cannot believe, you know, it doesn't matter. Right, right. They're still going to have the effects of it. Right. And they're going to have the effects. They're going to see the change of it. And when people see, when they definitively see uh, these physical changes take place, it's going to be, I got to remind people, we walk by faith not by proof, but when you start seeing things, when there's no doubt that the spiritual realm is real, uh, you no longer have to, you know, believe that by faith. That means that window of grace is closing. That means we're at the end of something. And so I hope that people understand that the worse things get, right? The more things will have been proven and the less grace that, that we're going to start to encounter. There will come a time where there'll be no more. There'll be no more forgiveness. Wherever a person is, that's where they're going to be. That's where they're going to be. And that's we know that's that day of God's wrath when it pours out. Those people who endure God's wrath, are we're stuck. And so, but uh, that's those why, times could come quicker than we anticipate. Amen. That's why we want to be on the winning side, folks. And, that, and the only way to be on the winning side is be in the will of God by accepting his son, Jesus Christ, and serving him and living for the Lord and doing the right things. Mike, 
What, what are we going to talk about next week? What, what, is there something brewing? Is there something on the horizon? We better be watching, be awake. I don't know, besides that earthquake on the, well, let's just say I'm, I'm expecting something on the 10th uh, to affect the earth. Besides that, I believe we'll have every subject to talk about. Yeah, people are, fi- look, look, past Paul, we're going to have a magnetic anomaly. Uh, right okay. now, every time, every time we have a magnetic anomaly, people lose their tempers. They lose their Uh-oh. tempers. Uh-oh. So expect something along those lines to take place with someone, you know, where people finally blow their top, go over the edge, do right. something of that nature. Right. Um, yeah, I so, expect that. I so really around do the 10th, the 10th of February, we might have a magnetic Earth issue. It'll be a it'll be an earth issue first. Yeah. It will ultimately turn into a you know some type of aggression issue with both people and humans. Humans and animals. Animals. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mike, thanks a lot tonight. I appreciate you mm. taking the time. I mean, we touched a, a lot of subjects. We did. But, but, but I tell you what. And don't laugh at Joe. I'm not don't laughing laugh at, at Joe. Joe. I'm not laughing. Hey. He he did say he did say, you know, red and green states. He Cognitive did. decline is a serious I'm thing. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I, I'm very careful. And about he's this. uh, he's uh, well, you know, it's almost something you can discern. It's almost something we can discern that his his time, his time is. He's frustrated. Is, is, I watched his press conference yeah. tonight. He was very yeah. angry. Yeah. He doesn't like his own side turning on him. He doesn't. Nobody would. Yeah. Nobody would want to hear that. Uh, yeah. His politics is awful, as far as I'm concerned. But he's still uh, the man in office. And he yeah. is a human being who is struggling with a mental decline. And we should not uh, make uh, light of that because right. um, our day is coming. If we, if we see a heavyset guy with the ears, uh, we're in trouble. That's all I'm saying. A heavyset guy Watch with the Watch ears. Out. That's right. Uh, Jerry Nadler. I don't know. I'll start Watch looking out. around. I'll start looking around. <laughs> All right, Mike. Appreciate you coming on tonight and being with us. God bless you, Pastor Paul. God bless. It's always an honor. Thank you. The honor is mine. Right. Believe me. Bless you so much. God bless. God bless. Heavy set guy with the ears. You guys have to help me out on that one and find out who he's talking about on that one. And also, Mike knows that there's going to be some type of event, some kind of uh, uh, magnetic uh, interference that does a magnetic anomaly. That's right. Uh, and and we, better, we better be watching to see what these things are. And all these things are leading us to the coming of the Lord. They are. They're, we're getting closer and closer to the coming of Jesus Christ. And not everybody's ready. I mean, a lot of people are not ready. And they're not taking it serious. There's a serious time coming. And the Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. And the soul that sinneth shall surely die. Because another scripture says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Are you ready to meet the Lord? If you'd like to be saved just type in the chat room, I want to be saved. I'd like to pray with you tonight. You know, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just type, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I remember the night I first gave my life to Jesus I was lost and all alone and so undone There were pieces of me here, pieces of me there And I was so broken Then I asked Jesus, can you put me back together again? And I know where I was then. I know where I am now. You came to me and you saved me and turned.
know where I am now You know this walk in life It's full of many decisions And we live with each and every one we make But the best decision I ever made Was when I asked the Lord Come and heal this broken man that I am. And I know where I was then. I know where I am now. Are you saved? He came to me. Let's get saved tonight. And you saved me. And turn. I know where I am now And I know where I was then I know where I am now You came to me And you saved me You turned my life around Thank you, Jesus And I Somebody needs salvation. There's a bunch of people already said they want to be saved. But somebody, there's somebody out there right now that if you don't get in tonight, I know where I was then. Lord. This may be the last and I know night you have to I make this now. decision. Scott from Scotland wants to be saved. Praise God. I'm playing this a little bit of this again. Right, start right here. I know where I'm just going to do it for you. Now. Don't wait. Don't you wait. Came to Don't me wait. And you saved me. Don't wait too late. And turn my life around. And I know where I was then, Lord. And I know where I am now know where you're at in other words have you been saved or are you still still in that marry clay of sin you know this walk in life it's full of many decisions and we live with each and every that's a way Chad we may. I'm so glad Chad you made that decision the best decision I ever made was when I asked the Lord, can you come and heal this broken man that I am? And I know where I was then. I know came to me and you saved me and turned my life around and I know where I was then Lord and I know where I am now and I know where I was then I know I know where I was then, Lord, 
and I know where I am now. What a beautiful song. Kevin Wilson wrote it. Kevin Wilson wrote this song, and he that was he and me. Uh, it was him and me uh, singing it as a duet together. It is a beautiful song, and I'm so glad tonight. I see people who have saying, "I want to be saved." I see people. There's one saying, "Please rededicate me." You know, when you come to Jesus, just as you are, just as I am, without one plea. When you come to Him. Just as you are, he, he will accept you by faith if you just come to him and say, Lord, help me. There's two more, Tim and Mary, wanting to be saved. This is the moment, folks. I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. Help me, Lord, to repent of all my sins and confess them to you. I know, Lord, I'm a sinner. I absolutely know it. And I'm not going to I'm not going to be a hypocrite about it. I need salvation. Lord, I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing them to you. And I'm crying out to you and I'm calling on your name to forgive me and to cleanse me and to wash me in your precious blood. To set me free, to break the chains, to break 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 all the chains of that the devil's got wrapped around me and set me free. By the blood, by the power of the blood. The blood is enough. In Jesus' name, set me free. Because I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. I believe that Christ rose from the dead. I believe that he ascended into heaven sits at the right hand of God, and I believe he's coming back. And he's coming after us and those of you who are ready. There's Marvin saying, i also getting saved tonight. So, Father, in the name of your precious Son, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm healed, I'm delivered, I'm set free. I'm, dis, uh, I'm, I'm saved in Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord tonight. Praise the Lord for every one of you for coming tonight, for being a part of this online church. Thank you for praying for the people. Thank you for being with us tonight. And I'm so glad for those of you who got saved. I want you to get baptized. I want you to get baptized. Find a pastor. Find a church somewhere in the community where you live and tell them you got saved. All right, or come down to Florida, I'll baptize you, okay? Or this summer, I'll baptize you at my home in Indiana, okay? It, I just want you to get get it all. I don't, don't, don't just get part of it. Get it all. Get saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, and get ready to go because time is running out. If you need a Bible, let me send it to you for free. I'll, I'll just send it to you for free. Just, just send an email to Miss ZD. Zero one at hotmail dot com. That's Miss Z D zero one at hotmail dot com. If you need a Bible, if you need a, a prayer cloth because you're sick or somebody you know is sick, uh, uh, I just want to you just send an email to Miss Z D. We gotta know your name and your address, and we'll get it to to you. We anoint it with oil. We pray over these prayer cloths. They have healing scripture on it, and we get it to you in Jesus' name. We send it by faith in the name of Jesus. And uh, then if somebody is very, very ill and need a miracle, here's here, let me put it right there on the screen. There's scripture reference right there. It says free Bibles needed. Email to MissZD01 at hotmail, hotmail.com, right? You know, right there, okay? So get that. And if somebody is very, very ill, and needs a miracle. God is in the miracle working business. We'll send a, a blanket. We'll anoint a blanket. Heidi started this uh, portion of the ministry 
when God told her to start giving out blankets to people. And I want to thank all of you who send blankets. Some of you that are, you, you hand make them and you send them by faith. And we receive them and then we, we store them. And then as each day, every day when people are needing a blanket because somebody's very ill, somebody's in stage four cancer, somebody's been in a car accident, someone's got a brain tumor, some little child's having open heart surgery, some, you know, serious things. Then we take, we, we pray and we ask God to tell us which blanket to send. We anoint a blanket, we send it, send it by faith, pray over it, send some uh, other little goodies with it and send it out to those. And we expect And we believe, and many times we receive a miracle. Not every time. Sometimes it's our time to go. Sometimes God just says, and when that happens, the person, maybe it's time for them to be leaving this world. God just comforts them. And they'll say it. Give me my blanket. I feel better with my blanket from the church. Give me that blanket from Paul Begley Ministries because they sent it to me with love. They sent it to me. I want you to know, Heidi and I, we care. We read every one of your letters. We pray for you every night. I pray for you every day. We get emails all the time of serious crisis. People's loved ones who passed away, tragedies in your family. We send grief packets out to people if they lose a loved one. We do this all for free. You know, we're not just a YouTube channel. Maybe I should just clarify that because every now and then I get beat up from people and they'll say Begley you know this and, that, and I'm thinking you don't really know who we are do you? you don't really know who we are and that's my fault because I don't go around you know bragging about it or trying to exalt uh, ourselves you know we, we don't want to do that we want to exalt Jesus and we could not do what we do if it weren't for you you send your tithe and offerings. This is your home church. This is where you're being fed of the gospel. God told you to be a part of this ministry. If you, if he has spoke to you and said, you got to be a part of this. Pastor Paul and Heidi need you. You're not giving it to us. I want you to know that. You're giving it to the Lord. We're just the ones that have to let the river flow through us. We're responsible to God for that. And we to use it for the kingdom. And so I want to thank you for being faithful. Every one of you. Some of you send a check every month in the mail. Some of you here, I can put my address up here because some people like to do it that way. So let me do that right there. Some of you um, send a, a, send a every week. Some of you go to our website at paulbakeleyprophecy.com and you send a, a, your, your offering every week. Some of you send it once a month. Some of you text give it every couple weeks. Some of you pick up the phone and call and uh, and give it right over the phone. Uh, Some of you go to Breeze and you give it over there. Some of you text give it, you know, many different ways. I just want you to know that God will put it in your heart. You'll know what to do. Please don't take this lightly respond i'm giving i'm giving an altar call right now let me just put to you this to the to the christians for giving matter of fact i want you to write this down this coming march the first will be our 14th year anniversary 14 years preaching the gospel doing videos doing live shows holding altar calls 14 years on line our online ministry will be 14 years old this coming march the first now we do this every year we take a special offering that weekend a special offering and and uh, so that it helps us have the the funds to get out ahead we don't we don't so we're not we don't want to be right down there real close and scraping and praying you know get a boost get a boost and so what i'm going to ask you to do is pray about that and ask God what you should do to bring your best offering, your best offering for the March 1st, 14th anniversary of this online church. 14 marvelous years, thousands of salvations, 
mi- hundreds of miracle healings, thousands of Bibles sent to people all over the world. The orphanage in Pakistan that we support every month to keep 43 of those little children clothed and a, and a roof over their head and food to eat. 250 pastors that we now are responsible for to help push them throughout the land of, of India. We do this on a monthly basis. I never know. And here's the thing. I never know where, where, the, where it's coming from. Someone asked me one time, said, how, how do you live like that? Well, it's called living by faith. And we do it because God told me to do it. And then God said, and, and he said, I will send you supporters. I will send you faithful members of your online church. I will send you people who I will bless. And I'm going to tell you something. You can't outgive God, I promise you. I wish I could get to spend a morning or an afternoon or an evening with every one of you. And I've been blessed over these 14 years to be able to have lunch with some of you, to have breakfast with Anna Irwin one time after I preached in Alabama, to have dinner with folks who uh, I met in different states, whether it be in West Virginia, Wheeling, West Virginia, or uh, Richmond, Indiana, or uh, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, or, you know, wherever it is, uh, spend some time. Or maybe a lot of you, um, 125 of you came to my home last summer, and I fed you a huge meal by the by the grace of God. Heidi made sure, it, you know, and but I want to ask you to help me make this March 1st special anniversary, our 14th anniversary. Let's make it the best offering, the best one we've ever collected, the best one you've ever given, and let's keep winning people to Jesus because time is running out. God bless all of you. I love you guys. I really do. I want to thank uh, Mondo De La Vega for coming on and being with us. Uh, I'm going to be on the Jim Baker show here pretty soon. Uh, via satellite, and then, uh, and then I'll be on the, uh, later with the book Revelation nine eleven. And I want to thank you guys for Revelation nine eleven. It's miraculous how well it's doing today. It was number fourteen on the church, uh, church and um, church and state uh, category of Amazon. And uh, I want to thank you for you. Many of you have ordered it in advance. Many of you have ordered more than one. Some of you have ordered five. One guy ordered ten, I guess. And, and God's telling me there are people that are, are going to be ordering, you know, five and ten and twenty of these books because they're going to be giving them out, giving them to people. It's a great way to, to evangelize. So thank you for doing that because lives are going to change. The plan of salvations in this book. Uh, we hope to be a blessing to you. We love all of you. Heidi and I love you guys. Thank you for being our our partners and our friends. I'll see you tomorrow. Get you back up to speed on everything going on right here on the coming apocalypse.